um, I invite you to join the conversation this morning via our WhatsApp line 0549-986-996. 0549-986-996. Uh, this week has seen quite a number of activities. Uh, it began over the weekend, really, with the invasion of a private TV station called United Television, UTV. It was during a live entertainment program when some hoodlums who say or who are affiliated to the MPP stormed the station to demand representation on the program. The program, an entertainment one, uh, according to uh, the hoodlums, uh, began turning political and they had written to the station uh, demanding that they are represented on the program. But does a private company or a private television station owe it an obligation to any political party to have representation of that party on their pan panel? Uh, what right did they have to storm the station in that manner, to demand representation and even ask for uh, a particular panelist? What did they want to do with that panelist? What would have happened if that panelist was around? What happened to security? What happened really to the party that most people have thought or thought was one which dealt with matters using the pen? What happened to uh, the, the host and other panelists on the program? We understand they, are, they were traumatized and they have been given some attention. The station has vowed to go the full length of this to ensure that justice is served. A number of apologies uh, came in from the Ministry of Information condemning it and apologizing to the station and panelists and all those who were affected. The party itself, first of all, sent their director of communications to apologize and then to uh, assure that they would deal with the matter. The general secretary of the party, the chairman of the party, and other top officials of the party have also taken turns to visit the station and offer their apology. But is that enough? What happened to the real people who did the thing? Have they apologized? What is happening to the criminal justice system? You understand they've been granted bail by the police. Is that the case? And when are we seeing them really uh, arraigned before court? Uh, this is what is engaging our attention this morning. Just yesterday, at the NDC's uh, vetting of the Odododio constituency primaries, which took place at the party's regional uh, office around Southla. One of our reporters, Akusi Ochri, was attacked by some of the uh, rampaging youth who had come to support one of the candidates. In their case, they claim that one of the candidates or aspirants didn't have to qualify. And by virtue of the fact that he had gone through uh, the vetting and done the balloting, it meant that he had qualified or passed the vetting. They say that this gentleman was a member of the MPP and even ran on the ticket of the MPP before, and so should not have qualified to run on the ticket of the NDC or to run or to appear on the NDC ballot paper to be subsequently elected as a candidate for the NDC in the area. So in the melee, uh, a number of people were hurt. Our reporter was conducting an interview uh, they tried to snatch her phone, struggled with her, and whilst in that struggle, somebody came from behind, hit her hand with an object, her hand got swollen, and we had to rush her to the hospital. And as we speak, she's still recuperating. This is terrible. This is what will be happening in the 21st century uh, Fort Republican Ghana. Is the media under siege? What is the matter? This is one of the, this is one of the main issues we are discussing uh, this morning. Also, on the second part of the program, uh, we'll look at, uh, it's been a week which has been heavily laden with matters of corruption, fight for or against corruption, uh, the government's battle against corruption. We have an OSP who appeared discontented. Uh, he, went, he, was, he went to court to confirm the freezing uh, of the assets of Cecilia Dapa. Uh, if you recall, Cecilia Dapa, you know, got in the news after uh, her house help stole or allegedly stole some huge sums of money from her home. The matter traveled to court and eventually uh, it assumed huge or gained huge public attention why a minister of state should have such huge amounts of money in there. The special prosecutor stepped in and also went to conduct a search in the house and found also some huge amounts of money, seized her accounts and seized, froze her accounts and seized those amounts, went to court to get those seizures and freezes confirmed, but the court in the first instance said he hadn't made enough case against the matter and so uh, failed to confirm it and therefore unfroze the account. 
special prosecutor in handing over the cash to the lady in question rearrested her and they are back in court. The lady and her lawyers went to court this week to seek an abridgment of time because they say that the return date on the original application uh, is too far away and that is working hardship and causing injury to the lady in question. So the court abridged the time. So just when the application for the confirmation of the Caesar was to be heard on the abridged date, Office of the Special Prosecutor's lawyers did not turn up. Why? Because they said they had petitioned the CJ that they were uncomfortable with the judge in question because uh, the judge appears prejudiced against the person of the Special Prosecutor and even the Office of the Special Prosecutor. So they do not feel that they would get justice if the same judge continues to sit on the case. For that reason, the application could not be heard on that day. The matter had to be adjourned. So we are waiting for what the Chief Justice will say, whether the Chief Justice will change the judge or will say that indeed no case of bias or prejudice has been made against the judge. So the judge should continue. The Chief Justice could say any of them. So we are awaiting her response in respect of that. Also this week, we saw Atuasian, uh, the former managing director of the Defunct Capital Bank, jailed for 15 years. It initially, I mean, the ruling or the judgment should have come sometime last year, but he entered into an arrangement with the state uh, relying on Section 35 of the Courts Act and even the plea bargaining act, which meant that he could pay some, he could pay the money and walk free, even though he had pleaded guilty to the charges. Two other people who were involved in the matter were acquitted and discharged. But in this case, the, uh, the gentleman, Atuasian, was supposed to have paid to the state 90 million cities. He paid 30 million and was supposed to have paid the 60 million in three different tranches, 20 million by April and then another 20 million by August and then and another 20 million by December, I think. But he failed on the two occasions, in the April deadline, on the April deadline he couldn't pay, and then on the August deadline too he couldn't pay. He could only pay three, seven million out of the 40 million, which means that in all, he's paid 37 million cities to the state. Per the law, the state could go back to court with an application to ask for custodial sentence or a sentence because he's been, he's been convicted already. He pleaded guilty in the end, so he's been convicted already. It's a sentence and that was suspended. So with this new development, the state went back to court seeking uh, to get the court to pronounce sentence on him. Um, it happened a few times. The court exercised some magnanimity, but eventually the court's patience ran out because the gentleman was not able to pay the money. He said... He had some properties he wanted to liquidate, but they, it was proven difficult. Eventually, uh, he was sentenced to 15 years in jail with hard labor. That is, uh, many have said, uh, a step in the right direction towards the corruption fight. Others who have raised other issues, and what happens to others who are also involved in it. We will discuss all of that uh, today. Also, uh, this week, the Attorney General's report uh, on the Professor from Paul Boateng matter came out. The Attorney General said that Freeport Boateng did not pre present any evidence uh, that could ground any serious work. And so because of that, nothing happens. That is the state of affairs uh, this morning. And uh, if we have time, we will look at also what happened, what this has been happening in certain parts of the voter region in respect of the spillage of the uh, Akosombo. There are many, many, many people, thousands of people have been displaced, and you should see in the videos and the pictures. Nadmo and relief agencies have been called uh, to work. Whether they are delivering or not is another matter. Whether they are equipped enough to undertake such a huge job is a matter up for discussion. In the meantime, as was announced yesterday, the government has set up an interministerial committee chaired by the chief of staff to look into this matter, made up of more than 12 key ministries uh, to look into the matter and see what can be done about the disaster. This is the big issue of platform for incisive analysis and riveting conversation. Once again, my name is Salam Adunu. Welcome to the program. We'll take a short break, return, provide you updates, introduce our guests, and we'll get the discussion on that. Once again, you're welcome. You're welcome back uh, to the big issue, uh, live on 97.3 City FM. Two issues this morning, uh, whether the media is under siege, the UTV and the MPP tag invasion incident. And just last night, a CCTV reporter was also attacked at an NDC uh, program. The media really under siege. What is happening? 
We also look at government's battle against corruption. We have a discontented OSP, the AG's report on Professor Frumpon Boatin and Atuisian's incarceration. Uh, but let me just provide you some updates. Now, the Ghana Police Service apprehended 16 individuals who had invaded the UTV studios in Accra. This intervention came in response to a complaint uh, from the Despite Media Group and the Ministry of Information, who reported the intrusion during a live broadcast. The disturbance disrupted the show, leading to an abrupt cessation of the broadcast replaced by commercials. Subsequent online videos revealed the unsettling incident. The group responsible for the intrusion claimed affiliation with the New Patriotic Party and demanded an apology from a panelist called A+, -plus, resorting to threats. The aggrievances were related to perceived disrespect by the musician turned politician towards the MPP, President Kufadu, and the Vice President, Dr. Baumia. Uh, the Ghana Police Service promptly responded to the situation, apprehending the 16 individuals in connection with the event. There is more in the following report. On September 19th, 2023, Justin Frimpon Kudria, the General Secretary of the New uh, Democratic uh, Party, uh, he's, he's sent joining a letter on, to uh, Despite this Media moment. General uh, Manager. The letter outlined several demands claiming that the United Showbiz program on UTV was favoring the opposition NDC's interests and needed reforms. It criticized the program for featuring individuals who use strong language and insults against the president, calling for NPP representation to ensure fairness. This letter caused discontent among some regular show panelists, including the controversial musician and activist Kwame Asari Obin, also known as A+. So I let away NPP for Mudia Adi, we are a tiny, then we will attack you more. And Obi Mamun Chobium, let away a letter from Salet, a letter, a letter from Mudia and Cross Salet. You cannot, nobody in this country can decide what we do on this show. On Saturday, October 7, 2023, a group of about 16 individuals invaded UTV's premises and studios. They specifically wanted to meet Kwame A. Plus citing his previous comments on the same program as their reason. He was able to sit here and tear our document. That is our property. We need him to render an unqualified apology. Again, the same person has insulted our, our general secretary, he has insulted our vice president, he has insulted our president. And there's nobody here to defend them that is unfair on our part. That is why we have come here and want to be part of the with all due respect, we respect you so much. Well, the program has turned into a political show. So if you want us to move outside before they start the program and you can assure us that we will come inside, fine. However, that not expanded. We expect that at least, even if you allow maybe about three or four of us to be here and then the rest, the rest of the, um, the, the team. team or the invited guests can also join, we'll be glad to do so. According to these individuals, a Plus's alleged comments were contributing to the MPP's declining popularity. A Plus, narrowly avoiding the intruders, later used the platform to challenge those he believed were responsible for this act of lawlessness. When John Mahama was president of Ghana, then a what happened? What happened? And these things have been going on to the extent, say, judge to court a DSM, then some boys can go and overrun the court and sack the judge in a country where the president is a part of the bar association. Shortly after this incident, the Ghana Police Service confirmed the arrest of these 16 individuals based on an official complaint from UTV's management. The Ministry of Information also issued a press statement condemning the act and urging journalists to exercise caution in program moderation. Ichida Hyangba, the communications director of the NPP, visited the TV station to disassociate the party from the individual's actions and extended an apology to the station's management and viewers. Uh,
na me bae no sima na metiti na kwa kwa ese nkofobia o mani nji bibi hu ana o baba na de be kwati ye no so so ese bia o mo ye mpp4 ana asa ese dia party ana ni pe bi echi be be ko ko ese ade no eh uh, bi he mu no ye ni eh uh, direction bi afi party se obi mra no me se ese ashu yi enti de si ye no e most of fortunate as a party no uh, young for us, so if I can say, will be in fee, yeah, yeah, catchy, and best say programmer. More machine share are more, yeah, my gunner for AT in the piano, and I be a MPP, yeah, she says, will be my sir. And you know, uh, make a police station, I'm a who say, or more, or more statement, and I encourage you, or more say, or more, or more statement, and I'm on your investigation. They who they be a daily fee, eh, but say, they are, yeah, they are, but you. Meanwhile, the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, released a press statement condemning the NPP for the behavior of its members. The National Media Commission expressed concern about the incident and committed to assisting the police in their ongoing investigation. All right, so uh, that was a report on the happenings um, there. Uh, meanwhile, the Information Minister, Kujo Pongkrumah, has asserted that his ministry uh, has been consistent in its condemnation of attacks on media houses perpetrated by thugs affiliated with political parties. His remarks come in response to the GJA, uh, which expressed his appointment with upon Krumah's statement regarding the assault on UTV in Accra. In a statement signed by the General Secretary of the GJA, Kofi Abwa, it was pointed out that the minister had failed to directly denounced the attack on UTV. The GJA deemed the minister's statement as lacking in decisiveness and criticized his attempt to justify the attack by mentioning alleged unauthorized entry by the assailants. They noted that the minister himself had reported the incident to the police. In response to these claims, Kojong Pong Kruma defended his position on the city breakfast shows, asserting that the allegations by the GJA were unfounded. To all the three statements we've issued, uh, even before this particular one, we, as the Ministry of Information, never go out to describe in any particular set of words what has happened. We tell the public the report we have received. So let me take you back and give you the evidence. When in um, May 2022, we issued a statement on Radio Binger. I want to read you the first paragraph of the statement. We said, we note with concern the report of an attack on the station. Let me give you the example of, because what we had received was reports of an attack. Then in January 2022, when we issued the statement on Radio Adana, we said, the Minister of Information notes with alarm, reports of an attack on the station. Those were the reports we had received. In uh, May 2023, when we issued the statement, I think about that one FM, we said we note with concern this time there was reports of an assault. In this particular instance, we did not describe it as alleged something something. We said we have received reports at our media monitoring center that some persons had entered the studios allegedly without authorization. That's the report that we have received. And every time we issue a statement, we talk about the report we have received. When we received this report, that was when we then asked for validation, and then we called the police to go and investigate what has happened. In all the incidents that happen, when we receive a report, we tell the public the kind of report we have received. We call the police directly and tell them that this is the report we have received. Go in and investigate. Mm -hmm. And then we also, like I mentioned to you about three months ago, invite the police to come and give us an update of the investigation. Following the report that we got and we brought to your attention, I believe that um, the, 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 the view that we have described it differently is not correct. We have consistently told the public the kind of report we receive. Number two, I noticed, and I believe you are referring to the GJ statement, I noticed that the GJ statement suggests that we have been uh, uneven-handed in dealing with the situation because in some instances we call the petition and the presenters to offer support, but in this one we didn't do it. That's why I regret that whoever issued the statement did not even bother to uh, maybe give us a call or 
confirm that that's what has transpired. In fact, when I saw it, I actually thought it was a fake statement. So I sent it to the GTA president himself. He has not replied to me even as now. Yeah, but, but could you, the, the, um, fair enough. The journalist in question, of course, UTV Studio had a whole show going on. But the person they were looking for is A+, plus because he was the person who they were asking to be removed from the program. So the question would be, if you use the track record of all the things you've done, of course, we are not saying he was attacked physically, but in consistency with the four things you've, you've told me, then it suggests that you would have called him because he's the person who they were looking for. Exactly. So now let me answer you. When we received the report, I told you the report we received. We received reports of alleged unauthorized entry. I first called the patient uh, manager, which is what we always do, uh, this time, Father Dixon. When I couldn't reach him, I called the Fakari directly. He may call the Fakari who attests to it. And I called the host of the program, Ms. G. In fact, she herself on her show with her panelists there after my call, this is before they went on air, acknowledged that I had personally called to speak to them to find out whether anybody had okay. been hurt or had been injured. So just to end, end on your point, the DGE did not have this fact. They did not bother to check this fact with anybody. That's why I was a bit surprised right. when I saw this. So I forwarded it to them. Okay. If I may not, then, okay. So that's why I forwarded to them to find out what are they really wrote this because what they've written is that very with the fact. So if the Minister of Information is, is going to issue a statement primarily on the matter, the the weight of responsibility should not be on the media. The weight should be on no, the, the guys of responsibility should be on the guys who did responsibility. Should be on the guys who did what they did. The weight of responsibility, if I may respond to that, the weight of responsibility is not pushed onto the media. Please listen to me. In the first statement that you read, and all the ones I've read, we tell you exactly the report we received. In Radio That One, we did not receive a report of alleged assault. We received a report of an assault with a video attached to it. What we did was to tell the public that we have received a report of an assault. In the case of UTV, what our media monitoring uh, center informed us was a report of alleged uh, uh, unauthorized entry into the station. And it is exactly that that we told the public. We are not the ones who have introduced the word alleged here. The report we get is the report that we put out there. All right, so you, uh, you, you saw or heard that report. Uh, that, I mean, that interview really between Bernard Avner and Kuponkruma, Kujo Ponkruma, Information Minister, on government statements on the incident at UTP. Um, my guest this morning, uh, Edward Bauer, Member of Parliament for Bungu, uh, Dennis Abwaji, uh, Miracles, Presidential Staffer, and um, a Spokesperson, or Communications Team Member of the uh, Government. Uh, Franklin Kujo, President, Imani Africa, and also Duke Aaron Sasu, who's a member of the Movement for Change and a private legal practitioner. Uh, gentlemen, you're welcome to the program. Thank you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> over the weekend, we, we saw this attack on a huge media house, the UTV. There was a live program ongoing. Um, I start off with you, uh, Dennis. Uh, huge, huge media house, huge, huge program ongoing, very huge listenership as well, or viewership. All of a sudden, the program was interrupted, and hoodlums, uh, tags, young guys from uh, your party invaded the station, demanding representation, saying that they did not have a member of the party on the panel. Uh, this shocked a lot of people, and uh, here we are, uh, wondering what has happened to the progress we've made as a people in terms of uh, uh, media freedom and all of that. This will come to you, Dennis, as a member of the, the governing the, the governing party and, and as Prime staff uh, as a very disappointing episode. Um, thank you, and a very warm good morning to my senior. Um, I have spoken to some of the guys who were in the UTV studios, because right, I know them. And let me also say that I don't think they are hoodlums, mm. and I also don't think that they are thugs. Mm. I believe that if we are given another opportunity, they would have handled this particular matter differently. Um, 
the guys who are in the UTV studio are party people, as a matter of fact. Some of them are constituency youth organizers, some are regional youth organizers. So I find it quite unfair that a lot of the news carried describe them as thugs and hoodlums. Because, I mean, there is no report of any vandalism. They didn't go there with any weapons. They didn't break into the studios. They actually walked into the studios and all that. But like I said, if they are given opportunity, they will handle this matter differently, Salom. The, it's a big worry for me that in 2023, we still have people within our political space, like our young guys who went to the UTV, who still do not accept the fact that we are in a free speech world where everybody should be able to say whatever. Um, however they want to say it, so long as it doesn't breach the, the peace of our, of our nation. And I am an advocate for brute conversation mm. within every democratic space. I mean, I really don't care what you say about me. I know when I got an opportunity, I also say mine. And so if we still have situations where people would come and attack or sought to forcefully, you know, not allow you to make your point, then it's a worry. And so I, over the whole week, have been asking that we do not make this an MPP problem. It is actually a Ghana problem. Because if you look at all the news and all the things that happen around this issue of somebody has said this and some youth groups and all of that have gone to attack, it's always coming from the political parties. It tells you that we have a lot of work to do mm. when it comes to ensuring that these are young people understand the dispensation within which we, we, we operate. The recent by-election in Asin North, whilst the NDC were having a press conference, you know, and, and the stories are here. If you go to, is it, the, the gentleman's name was Odum Prince. Odum Prince. And this press conference was held at St. Andrew Senior High School. The youth, the NDC youth present, actually attacked the PCFM reporter. And when I was making this point this week on the ecosystem that we should not allow ourselves to be drawn into the MPP and NDC around this matter. Some disagreed with me, but the week didn't end. And yesterday, our friend, our sister, Akusia, has also been attacked. It reinforces my point <clears throat> that we can do politics and take advantage of it anyhow we want, but we should not lose sight of the substance. So after we've taken political advantage and made a noise about MPP4, MPP4, then we should still come back to the, to the substance. So yesterday, for instance, I posted the NDC attack on Akusia. I will also juice it. But eventually, we must still come to the substance of the matter. My only concern and worry is when we make all the political, we take all the political advantage of these issues, and then we allow a substance of the issue. The substance is that we still have people within our, poli our democratic space who still do not think that everybody should say what they want to say. And they feel that until they also have the chance to say it at the same time you are saying it, then you cannot be allowed to say it. That's a worry. And it's happening all over the place. The Dagbon attack on the Dagbon media house by the deputy, former deputy regional communications officer of DC. It happened. MPP youth have also had their own uh, uh, share of, of these things in other places. So it means that this is not the time to do MPP and DC. There are stakeholders within this whole conversation who must all be called out and everybody really directed so that if there's a young person watching us today after this conversation we say that oh okay so in spite of all the concerns that this youth raised if a similar scenario should happen in my area in bongo this is how i should handle it because people really genuinely don't know i'm telling you some of the people we, we have a political party where um, it's, we are still growing. Political parties where we are still growing. For some of the people, it's about we will not allow them to say anything about NDC or allow them to say anything about MPP. And that is dangerous, Elam. Especially for those of us who come and sit on TV and radio. Imagine I step out right now and then some NDC youth you accost me on the company say, hey, you said this, da, 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 da. <clears throat> or honorable constituency, when you were talking, the way you addressed our honorable member of parliament, we didn't like it. And so we are coming to attack you. For me, I think that's where the danger is. And so, what is the responsibility of the media house? What is the responsibility of the media panelists? Or those, the panelists who go on the show? And what is the responsibility of these young people? 
the law should take its course it should deal with them but it doesn't solve it and so after all of that has happened how do we resolve the issues and i commend kuju upon Kruma and and the police and then richard i have my comms director with the way and manner they've handled it and i think that we should take a cue from this and really begin to do a lot more sensitization and advocacy on these issues like this because if i come and sit here imagine seated here and ndc has written a letter to city and raised concerns about ctfm's issues the law does not allow ndc to dictate the ctfm's editorial policy but the law also doesn't stop ndc from expressing their views and so this is not the first time this has happened in fact political parties have been writing letters to media houses expressing how they feel the ndc boycotted peace fm they wrote they actually issued a press statement and indicated the fact that they have concerns with even the paneling on the Kokoro Ko show where they felt that even some panelists should not be be brought onto the show it doesn't mean that peace fm will comply in fact they never complied but you can't also take that right away from the ndc in expressing their views so if the ndc writes to you you cannot sit on tv after you disagreed with them say whatever you want to say that's fine but to tear the letter is an act of provocation and that's even a crime in our laws mm. because if you sit on tv and use words in the in the exercise of your rights free speech rights you use words that provokes that incites that can cause public agitations that is also against the law and so the free speech is not free like without bounds it is free within a certain context of responsibility and so we need to now segregate each of these stakeholders and say media house when the gentleman was tearing this paper maybe you should have drawn his attention that hey no you can express your views because there are over 17 million people who voted for this political 7 million people who voted for this political party even though i am probably in the party and have a constituency in the capital where i am probably a leading figure I do not control them at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. on how they should act. So you should also be measured. But to pick the party's letter and then on live TV, as you insult, you use abusive words, you are tearing it. It's an act of provocation. Well, you are. Use abusive words. Yes, yes, yes. Sure oh, yes. Oh, watch the video again. No, what what the yeah, yeah, I mean, what's, what's abusive? What's abusive? No, you are using At some point, you said, You watch the whole show. Mm. Watch the whole show. You understand? So if you do all those things, and you t it's an act of provocation. As a matter of fact, even in our own social customs, values, when someone writes to you and you tear it, you can disagree with the person, but when you tear it, it sends a signal. And for me, I feel that the media has had the responsibility to draw his attention. I have no issue against individuals who want to express their views as forceful as well. Me, I don't care. Because I am of the view that I, no matter what you say, when I have the chance, I will also say something. So you say whatever I want to say, I will say mine. So I have no problem with people disagreeing with political parties and government. It means nothing. When you also get your turn this week, but don't engage in abuse and tearing the letter. But it, it, was, an act it, was, of it was a bit abusive. disconcerting for me when we, we later, uh, uh, you know, uh, revelations said that they were led by certain key actors, I mean, key party appointees or, or, or constituency Absolute, executives yes, and all yes, of that. Absolutely. That, that, what, that is terrible. Yes, that is what I have raised and that's what I have said. I've told you that speaking with these guys, and that's why they cannot be described as hoodlums and tax, because one, they didn't go with weapons. And we must acknowledge that as well. But we don't even know what, what they No, had. they did not. We know, because they were there. They were on camera. No, but if they had weapons on them, maybe the situation didn't arise for them to have weapons. I agree, but we so, cannot, we so, cannot, you cannot assume what you do can't establish. Yeah, so, so, so you don't also say... No, so you don't, that? They didn't. No, so you don't also say that they prove. didn't go with They didn't it. go, I know yes, that for a fact. But they could have gone with it. But they didn't. But the situation didn't arise. I don't know. No, we've spoken to them, and there was no evidence of that. No, but you know, you have been conclusive. I am. Because at this point, between you and I, you are the one assuming. <coughs> I am establishing a fact because they, there was no evidence of same. Yeah, but you are saying that they were saying, taking, taking straight away mm. to the police. And mm. the police didn't find any weapons on them. So right now, you are the one assuming. Mm. I am speaking to facts. Unless you can prove otherwise, mine would stand. Because they were arrested right from there, taken to the police. And the police found no. I want us to no, no, understand. So, 
So they are not hoodlums. They are identified individuals at the party leading their various constituencies. Mm. But like I said, if they are giving another... But that was an act of thuggery. That, that, that's all hoodlums. They are, no, not necessarily. You know, that was a, that was a violent act. The only, difference, a violent between, act. the only difference between them mm -hmm. and the 37 occupiers is that they didn't notify police. That's the only difference. Mm. That is the only difference. The fact that there were about 16 damage that mean they are taxed. The only difference between them and the 37 occupiers mm. is that they didn't notify police. Were they, were they taxed? Those who were doing the Occupy Julia, the way they tax. I think sometimes we shouldn't cloud the substance mm. with some of these descriptions. They were wrong. They were not supposed to have done that. Speaking to them, if they had another chance, they would have handled it differently. But come on. We can't superimpose descriptions and, and, and identity but, based but, on how we feel. But storming a station, breaking, I mean... They didn't break into the I station. I mean, that's unauthorized, un 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 exactly. un exactly. Yes, you yes. Know, that's what I'm saying. You know, and, and all of that. They, they, this could be acts of violence. Uh, no, angry. no, it's not. It's not. Mm. Perfectly right. It was unauthorized. If you have people, have people marching here, you know, hailing words, attacking... Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's violence. It, no, it's not. But what is violence? Was it violence when we're doing our protest in 2016? Was it violence when the NDC are doing their protest? They were protesting, but they protested wrongly. Yeah, so if you protest wrongly, I mean, so protests can go wrong. No, but that's not tagri. No, protests can go but wrong. You don't, that doesn't make it tagri. You know, I don't, you are shifting the conversation. Mm. You are making us drift away. Mm. And I'm saying that we cannot do that. It is not tagri. It is wrong. If I wake up this morning and I say that I disagree with what Was it violent? MP is saying and mm. I walk in here and I say, oh, no, but what you are doing, blah, 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 it's not necessarily because I am a tag. Because I am <laughs> no, but you haven't proven otherwise. No, I, I'm, that, I'm saying that the five, way you say the way you, you, walk, you walk in here. Yes, but they did. They didn't break any door. Mm. They didn't break any any property. They didn't destroy any property. Mm. But you know what they did to their security. They didn't do yeah. anything. We so, know. We so, know that so they didn't do anything. Yes, security man. Good morning. Good evening. We know that they didn't do anything because the police have gone into the matter. Mm. We know that they didn't do anything. You see, we cannot continue to as you want the facts are there. Mm. So what? What? what, what I have not seen any police facts. Yet. No, no, no. But why? We just spoke on TV. There, even the UTV, the issue they are stated. Did they indicate anywhere that when they came, they didn't enter to their security? Mm. So, again, if I don't bring the conversation back on track, by the time we finish, yeah. it's turned into miracles. Different, but that's all the fact. <laughs> what I am saying is that these issues happened yesterday. See what happened to Akosia. If we don't deal with it again and deal with it to the bottom, trust me, the next one, see people will do it. Mm. The next time we'll PNC and then we'll come and talk about it. The reality is that we have a democracy where we still have people who are still not tolerant to views. Mm. Very well. And <clears> so. We need to address that aspect of it. Mm. <clears throat> Guys, those of you who went to the Odo 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 office or the Odo Odo primaries to go and disrupt the NDC and, and, and they are they are betting and break chairs and beat the CTFM reporter, please, you don't do that. Mm. MPP, those of you who went to the UTV studio <coughs> to go and uh, disrupt the, program. the live program, you don't do that. And it's happened this year, it's happened that month, um, FM. A Simbreku press conference, the Peace FM reporter, it's happened all over the place. And whenever it happens, we are quick to move into issues of MPP, NDC. I said I refuse to be part of that. Mm. I believe strongly that it is a threat to our democracy. It is a danger to all of us. And we need to take the sentiment and political capital out Very of this well. and deal with the matter. I'm yet to, as a wrap-up, mm. I'm yet to hear... Um, could you appoint Kuma and the information minister on the Akosia matter? Mm. I think they need to do it quickly mm. so that those who were involved in it yesterday will also know that, hey, ours is not less uh, 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 difficult or dangerous than the ones that happened four days ago. The GJA are also here to speak on the, on the, on the Akosia, Akosia matter. I'm here to also see the police. Mm. Also deal with the matter. Is it the case that when it comes to when this violence has come home, so it's no surprise, mm. and that is why they don't want to talk about it? Because this morning I was also expecting that immediately as you, as the issue happened yesterday, even your show, you would have tweaked the topic to include UTV. You say tax, MPP tax, in but, 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 but did you hear my intro? Tax. Did you hear my intro? No, but this, but the topic that was no, no, but, I'm no, but it, no, did you hear my intro? Okay, I'm sorry. So this topic was prepared yesterday. They have to be. So this one, if I meant no, but did you hear my intro? Apologies. Uh, you're not okay. Apologies. But, so, but, right. but, so, but, 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 but,
uh, uh, we should not politicize violence. And we were talking about UTV and yesterday something else happened. But uh, what, what do you think really? You, you think that the system is degenerating to the extent that uh, political actors are no longer tolerant of, of divergent views. And even in this case, intra-party you know, uh, 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 disagreements or, or, or clash of views can lead to you know, such violence that people will be injured, you know, even party people and all of that. Uh, we thought we were making progress until these incidents, you know, started occurring. Is there something you might be worried about? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Salam, and then uh, good morning to Dennis. Uh, when they were introducing you, just last week or this week, I got to know that beyond just being a presidential staffer, you are also the head of a uh, I am Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a big man. The guy is oh, a big man. No, no, Dealing no, with no, donor, no. donor agencies. So. Yeah. He's a big money. So, when you see him and you just say presidential staff, it's, it, it, it's, 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 it's so it's 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 go back to where he controls huge sums of money. No, it's plenty job. <laughs> 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 yeah. it is, so, um, but you see, listening to Dennis, you know, one of the things that I agree with him when he says that uh, as Ghanaians, we should look at the issues of attack on the media houses and other things as a Ghanaian problem. And because it occurs in all other political parties. But where I am so sad is the fact that he seems in his argument, he tries to justify the behavior. Mm. And tries to create the impression that there was a trigger. Mm. And therefore, it is on the basis of that that these people did that. He turns on to try to let's say that, oh, he knows these guys, he knows them, they are very fine gentlemen. I agree with you. But tagri, so nobody is born as a tag. It is your behavior that makes it so. Were they aggressive when they went there? Yes, they were aggressive. Were they committing a crime? Yes, they were committing a crime. They formed part of the ingredients of integrity. And so to indicate that or that was a wrong description of them is simply wrong. Two, let me start my submission by, you know, I just here I got to know about yeah. the issue of the do, 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 yes, 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 yes. where if what you told me is anything to go by, uh, there was an agitation because one of the candidates, they felt that one of the candidates did not qualify to contest. So when they finally vetted the person and then at the end of the day, uh, the supporters of other candidates decided to say, that, look, what the party was doing was wrong, so they became aggressive. And in the course of that, they, the lady became part of the casualty in terms of the attacks that they were made. Let me first and foremost say that if these facts as presented to me are uh, what it actually was, that uh, I apologize to uh, your media house, I apologize to the lady, and wish her speedy recovery. And also to tell our party people that, look, Yes, I can understand sometimes the emotions that come with issues of uh, primaries and who qualifies and who, trying to get your, what do you call it, your, your, your candidate's interests uh, protected. But in doing that, you need to be able to isolate that. There are other people who also come there as part of their constitutional mandate to, what do you call it, uh, cover such programs. And therefore, such people should be protected. So let me unreservedly uh, apologize to the lady and wish her speedy recovery. I apologize to the, what do you call it, uh, uh, the media has. But I believe that the party in subsequent period will, will so definitely so come your out. your screen is, is, a, is, is a <laughs> okay. act of violence yes. that began at the place, uh, the, gent the, the people destroying chairs, chairs and all of that. And it, so it degenerated further. Further, you know, and then basically uh, she became a casualty of that. So I, I need to apologize for that. But you see, I can understand when you, you indicate that, look, sometimes because democracy, we, uh, democracy is just 30 years, isn't it? They're about, okay. Even democracies where you have about 200 years, I'm talking about the US and other things, you have situations where sometimes the conduct of individuals or conduct of persons can infringe upon the, what they call it, the constitutional rights of media houses and what have you. So I can understand those things. And we are still in the learning point. We are still in the infant stage when it comes to issues of democracy. But I, can, I, I cannot understand when you have a situation where the state that is supposed to lead in protecting these rights, the state itself becomes the perpetrator of the violation of these rights. 
You know, obviously, uh, Chapter 12 of our Constitution guarantees these, the media houses and as to how they operate and what have you. Yes, the guys who went to UTV, it is true that maybe you think that they are young people. But let's look at the incidents that predicated that. You had your deputy communications director. And this is not... As well. I if somebody from audio, audio, audio or maybe somebody from uh, Colliculate decides to go and do that, I can understand that. But you have a deputy director of communications who goes to another st uh, sister station and then incites the youth against the station and questions them why they were being dormant and not reacting to what was happening. So I can excuse the guys themselves who went there, but what about the individual who is a party officer at the national level, no less a person, the deputy director of communication, goes to another station and incites this youth against the uh, radio station. You cannot for a moment say that this then becomes a problem. It's a party problem because there must be a level of discipline and you must show leadership to the, the people who are following you. So if you, as a director of communication, you go to say this, then how then do you justify the behavior? That's the first point. Secondly, look, in your own station, your own station here, and I, I believe the one in, uh, what's the name? Uh, Adabraka. You had a situation where national security operatives, mm. these, are, these are state people we pay with our tax. They, they storm into your studios, come after a helpless journalist. What was her crime? She had received files, uh, video files, from another colleague who had been arrested. Because what was he doing? He was taking pictures of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, abandoned cars. Abandoned cars at the National Security Secretariat. This is the state. We're not talking about just individuals. This is the state perpetuating this. So there were national security installations. Yes. This is the state that was doing that. Two, you had a situation where the same national security operatives, they stormed into modernghana.com, arrest their editor, mm. arrest a reporter, detain them and molest them. What was their crime? That they were being critical of the Minister for uh, National Security. Mm. And they had published something. That was that. So when you see situations like this, you don't justify by saying that, look, um, what do you call it? Oh, yes, it's a Ghana problem. I can understand because sometimes some people can be so unguarded. You know, all of us have them in our various places. People become too exuberant. They think that that is what they are doing need to protect the party. I can understand those ones. And so that's why he was excited. I the parties, like you also said, are not doing enough to rein in this misguided so element, which that you, I, two of you claim do not represent, you know, Yes, but I, the point I'm just making is that, the point I'm making is that I am isolating the issues mm -hmm. that I can understand if, for example, you have a situation where uh, these boys rush into the place, they may not even know the consequences of what they are doing. They may not even be aware of the provisions within the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But I fail to accept that a deputy communication officer mm -hmm. of the party at the national level, that's mm -hmm. a director at the national level, we instigate the youth against that particular uh, uh, TV station. That is the problem I'm making. But it is your behavior because you are supposed to offer leadership. And particularly the fact that you, by your position, you, are inter you interact with the media. And you can instigate your party youth against them. That is the problem I have. Mm. The so other so point, point is that, I mean, you're trying to distinguish one from the yeah, other. Well, one other. Because organized. organized. And, and one, that one was spontaneous. It was spontaneous. You can have those things. I just, you just showed us the issue of uh, Odododio's case. They did not necessarily have a problem with the reporter. Mm. They had a problem with the process. And in the course of that, became violent. Mm. And in the course of the violence, the lady became a casualty. Mm. And it still does not excuse their behavior. And I think that parties and for that matter, the constituency writing should be able to find a way of indicating very clearly to such individuals that look, there's a line between the journalist who comes to cover, because the person has no interest, all he's trying to do, what, are they, what is the rule? Why do we guarantee, what do you call it, uh, the freedom of the press? For various reasons, transparency, accountability, what have you. It, that's what we do. So they are there to just, uh, what do you call it, play their role. So I can understand that. But when you have state institutions 
violating the constitutional provisions as, uh, as captured in Chapter 12 of the Constitution, then I have a problem. You cannot excuse that. And if you look at it, look, since the 1992 up to now, and you look at our standings in the, what do you call it, the World Press, what do you call it, uh, index, you, 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 you realize that we are constantly, what we are, we are constantly going back. You remember last year we were 60th on the, on, the, on, the, on the rankings. This year we have fallen down to 62nd because of the behavior that we put out there. It is because of the fact that we begin to, as what Dennis did, justify the behavior of the assaults of what they call it, uh, media houses. No, no, I'm serious. No, 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 and I explain. No, 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 as that they had a problem with the party, it wasn't organized, and then Akusia was a casualty. I don't think you are justifying it, but you're trying to clarify it. Is that any different from what? No, so let me tell you why you're saying this. So I'm just saying that. So let me not for explain. the record, for so the record, so not explain to you for why. the record, I will not be drawn into that. I have not. Let me just make that categorical so that I don't associate with me. Okay. I have not justified what happened at UTV. When you when you make a statement mm. and you say you tend to say that look. A gentleman that's A plus was on radio on, on TV. I try to say because it is his behavior, the fact that he what do you call it? The, he told the, 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 the this in, uh, in live yeah. on live TV and that things. You are trying to give the basis under which the children the, the, the guys behaved. Oh no! When you did that, no, no, no. You are trying. You look. You you are finished. trying. You, yes, you are trying to justify. Basically, you are trying to justify that look because the guy behaved the way he behaved provocated them because he was talking about provocation so they were provoked mm. so that's a justification for it mm. that was me and i said that look i agree that these problems are cut across in political parties but if you look at the situation in which we find ourselves now it is not only just our party followers who are doing these things party officers at high levels national security operatives state institutions are those involved in the evaluation of the rights of these media houses and that's the point i'm just trying to make that in doing some of these things look and i'm surprised in your intro i think you even raised the issue here you have a situation where over the over the years you had a president who built a career out of fighting for the rights of individuals am i right yeah. fight he was a human rights fight uh, what do you call it a uh, campaigner he was somebody who stood for the freedom of the press he himself used the press to a very large extent. And under his stewardship, under his stewardship, you have a situation where our performance in terms of our free, uh, what the freedom of the press, the performance in the international rankings is deteriorating on a daily basis. Under his worship, uh, what do you call it, his stewardship, we have a situation where state institutions are now becoming the tools in violating these particular rights. Under his watch, you have situations where journalists can be arrested, locked up, and molested. What is the crime? Just because they are critical of a state uh, official. Mm, if you have situations like this, then what was the purpose for what happened when the, the issue of the criminal libel law was repealed under what they call Kufu? Because even that had to do with just the basis of the fact that look, you had committed a crime, where your publication was seditious, it was bad, and they could uh, prosecute you. So if you think that the, the minister for, uh, uh, what do you call it, national security was defamed, he had all the rights. Recently, the issue of, uh, what do you call these people again? The guys who just demonstrated recently. The, is it the BOG? Or the, not the, not the, the BOG one. The uh, Democracy Hub. Democra the, uh, Democracy Hub, the, the, the guy there, uh, Oliver. Oliver. Oliver had made some utterances. The national security, uh, security, uh, security minister thinks that what he, he did, he had defamed him. He decided to go to court. Is that not it? Mm. What prevented the Minister of uh, uh, National Security, if he felt that he had been, he had been uh, what do you call it, uh, defamed, he felt that what they did to him was libelous, he could have gone to court. But he decided to use his operatives to go and do right. things like that. So, yes, let's, let's uh, uh, consider this particular problem as a Ghana problem. But once we consider it as a Ghana problem, let's also begin to realize that 
even we as leaders, we are not behaving right, and particularly under this government, I think that the media has really been been attacked to an extent that it is not being uh, welcome. Very well. Let, 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 me, let me speak to oh, Franklin. Oh, oh, if I may, you, you, I think you, you, you let me speak to Franklin. Franklin. No, you, you come. I'll, I'll give you the chance. You, you, when, when you I know, but you, you were able to get. So, 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 so Franklin, I mean, you watching from the civil society space. I don't know how because you view the incidents of uh, the political, uh, 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 the intolerance of political activists you know, against media and, and what media people do this day. We're just talking about the UTV incident, then yesterday, another one also happens to our own Akosia. Uh, your, your thoughts, and, and I'm interrupt you, take a break and come back. Well, I mean, uh, good morning to my good friends in the studio and to everybody listening and watching. Uh, you know, I guess uh, I'm particularly surprised that at a time when everyone is uh, going through uh, some form of economic challenge, uh, we actually would find time and uh, spend our energies to be discussing, uh, I mean, for people actually to go out of their way and, and initiate actions that would annoy everybody else. So for me, I'm a bit, uh, I'm a bit ambivalent because it's become part and parcel of our body politics anyway. And so I wasn't entirely surprised to see what happened. Not that we should accept it, but I think that the things that worry us greatly right now are bread and butter issues. And I, so I'm surprised that the gentlemen who went to that studio, well, they are gentlemen in quotes, uh, who went to that studio to go and uh, attempt to forcibly evict <laughs> a panelist, uh, probably are well to do. And they probably are so comfortable that they did not see anything at all that should be discussed concerning the economy of the country. And if a member of the AO party is discussing it, if the way they choose to go and uh, deal with him and uh, disrupt the program, well, the jury is still out there. So I maybe <laughs> I, 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 I really don't have anything to say except to say that it, was con it is condemnable uh, and that these persons probably do not live in Ghana at the moment. So the, the thing I've written is okay. There's nothing wrong if a member of your party is actually, uh, I mean, dis disagreeing with you, right? If I, indeed, if the panelist, whether it belongs to your party or not, uh, disagrees with the way the economy is being handled, everyone should be free to air his or her views and nobody should be attacked for it at all. So as uh, Dennis said, um, these guys who, well, maybe they are not tax, but they intended to be tagged. Um, I don't know. I hope that the party manages to deal with them. We've already mm. condemned it. You know, certain things. I watched that program and I was mortified. And after <laughs> what I saw was, was quite, uh, it was too dastardly for my liking. I see. And I'll be watching it tomorrow. Mm. I hope nothing will. Tonight, actually, and I hope that you, you watch tonight. I'm sure tonight they will have one of the, the biggest viewership ever because a lot of people will be wanting to see, yeah, a lot of people will be watching to see what happens. We'll take a short break, we'll return and continue on this particular sure. discussion on the media uh, uh, attack by politicians. Don't worry. You're welcome back to the big issue. A uh, very warm welcome to TV viewers as well. Uh, like now, 97.3 City FM on Facebook and uh, on other socials. Uh, the show is live and interactive. You can join the discussion uh, via the WhatsApp number, which is displayed on your screen, 020-444-7033. And we'll be happy to share your views uh, with the rest of the world. It's a platform for incisive analysis and riveting conversation. This morning, we're looking at two issues. Uh, we're asking whether the media is under siege. We have a UTV uh, uh, program, which was disrupted by uh, um, tax from the MPP. One of my panelists said they are not tax, they are identified people. I take note. And also, that was over the weekend. And also, yesterday at an NDC vetting event, the, uh, some members of the party who supported or who support one of the candidates were angry and they got violent and attacked, you know, anything that came, which came their way, attacked party people and uh, attacked a journalist, our journalist, Akusi Ochi, who was hurt and is still uh, uh, recuperating. Uh, you know, it's very unfortunate, many have said, but what really is the state of affairs? We appear to be having a lot of these in recent times, attacks on radio stations by uh, elements in the political parties who appear intolerant to dissenting views. 
in the case of the UTV, the, the, the organized group went there to demand representation. They said that it, it was an entertainment show, but they were discussing politics, and so they demanded that the MPP be represented on that program. What right really do they have uh, to do that? Did the party or did the, par the, the, the radio station or the TV station, UTV, have any role to play as well? Did they check any responsibility? You know, are they to blame someone <laughs> for whatever happened? Or the guys were wrong, so the guys were wrong. We understand they were arrested, uh, statements taken and granted bail. We are eagerly awaiting to see what happens next. That is our discussion this morning. On the second segment of the show, we'll look at government's battle against corruption. This week has been quite heavy on many matters like that. We have um, an OSP who I played discontented is asking the Chief Justice to replace or remove the judge on the Cecilia Ladapa matter because according to the OSP, he says, OSP says the judge is prejudiced against the person of the uh, special prosecutor and the office as well. They do not think that they will get justice with the judge sitting on the matter. Uh, the AG's report on the uh, Professor Frimpon Boating matter on Galamse, the AG doesn't appear to see anything in there because it says Professor Frimpon Boating failed to provide critical evidence that would need, it would need to pin down whoever. And, and Atuasian, that uh, young chief executive officer, former chief executive officer of the defunct capital bank, was handed down a 15-year jail sentence yesterday because he failed to fulfill terms of um, an arrangement he had with the state to pay 90 million cities. Uh, they agreed after he pleaded guilty. Um, he failed to do so. He paid only 37 million, and the rest of it he was unable to pay, so he has to do time in jail. Uh, that's the matter. We are looking at government's fight against corruption. This week has been heavy, heavy, heavy on that. My guest helping me do the discussion, Edward Bauer, MP uh, Bongo constituency, Dennis Abouaji, uh, presidential staffer, Franklin Kujo, uh, President Imani Africa, and Duke Aaron Sasu, member of the Movement for Change and a private uh, legal practitioner. So we've just been looking at uh, this matter of the UTV, whether there was any justification for the invasion. You know, uh, when somebody tears a document on read on TV, uh, will you say that you've been provoked? For which reason you will organize yourselves and invade the station? This is the matter we are generally uh, discussing. Dennis, I, I come back to you. Um, people are worried that uh, we have a lot of attacks happening uh, on media in, 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 in President Akufuado's government, you know, and that is quite worrying for, uh, uh, for a leader who. Uh, Champion claimed to have championed the, the repeal of the criminal libel law. Of course, people think it's Kufo's idea, and he has attorney general did. But what about the case? He was involved in it. He was successful, and, and a lot of other things he, he might have done in, in advancing free speech, etc. But now that he is in charge, people think that it is his intolerance or supposed intolerance for dissenting views that is percolating down and, and affecting um, how people in his party, especially, and, and the general public generally view. The, uh, uh, the issue of dissent when people are having discussions on radio, people are expressing themselves on radio. What, what do you think? I am, I am very tempted, you know. To equalize. Very, very, very tempted. To equalize. Yes, the same, <laughs> like the way Honorable Bauer did. But some part of me is telling me that I, I should it. And I, I think I'll listen to that small voice. It's a still voice. Yes, telling me that <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't. Because I feel that it's a danger to all of us, mm. and we could all be victims. This year, the last four attacks on media, three of them are NDC attacks. Mm. This year, there was one from June. At least let me recall the one I can recount from June. There was one in Asin Beku during the Asin North election, the one I told you. The, the press conference where the national executives of the party mm. were present, and I even understand that the former president was present. This year, it's mm. on piece of form, the piece of the gentleman was attacked. It was an NDC attack. The Dagbonti um, FM attack. It was an NDC attack. Yesterday, a sister acquisitions attack. It was an NDC. The Dagbon, the Dagbon one was one. Yes, NDC, a deputy, former deputy regional communications officer of NDC. Attacked. In fact, he has been jailed. Mm. He went to court. He's been jailed. 
attack. Was it not the one that it was, but it was a religious problem? No, no, no. It, it was a religious you issue. Attack. So, so you are doing the justice. No, 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 so, no, so, so, no. So, the so, point so, I'm just trying so, to make is like, a religious. We are, we are talking about the attacks in, in, context, media, yeah, in, is, in the no. context of 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 college oh, Yeah, this is a religious ah, issue. What are you what are you talking about? This is a media, yes. What are you talking about? But the context. No, no, no. You see, then then you begin to then you are doing the real justification. No, no. I am saying that no. So the the justification. if it's religious tolerance or if it's religious intolerance. Maybe you may not be the one to speak on it, okay? What, what are you speaking about politically? What I'm, I'm confused about what you're talking about. Mm. Should I read a story for you? So, you, you, you can read it. The radio host. Uh, yes, let me mm. read the story. Mm. Let me read the story. A radio host. So which, which where are you reading from? Sit, enjoy. Mm. A radio host with Dabon Radio, Sadiq Abubaka, was attacked while hosting a live show TV. He was assaulted by the former, by the region's former deputy communications officer in the NDC, Hadi Paza, who stormed the facility and started an altercation. Proud today, he said the panel have been having a discussion about the Ghana National Service in the region. Mm. Okay. And then he said, What have I done to you? The NDC member is said saying that they, they barged in. Mr. Paza was in the campaign on animal who shouted, Stop mentioning his name if you don't want to die. Mm. I don't know what. what, what mm. So, so what I mean, that, that, that's bad enough. That, that, that's bad and, enough. And, this is, and this is this year. It has nothing to do with This is 4th May 2023. Mm. The last four that I can recall on top of my head, three of them are attacks on the media by NDC people. Mm. So if our media perception index or press freedom perception index or whatever the index is, is going down, you don't blame it solely on the Kufuado and the MPP. Because if we were to count, you'd realize that my initial assertion stands that it is a Ghana problem mm. and that we should stop trying to weed around the issue and face it mm. and ask ourselves, what are the issues that may be triggering this? And what are the reasons why people still don't understand that these are not triggers enough? Mm. That's why when Ono Baba says that I was justifying it, I, I wanted to intervene. Mm. Because I have not done that on this show today. But and when, I don't when, you, want, when you start to say the trigger for that was the, the gentleman because you, see, because you can't take me out of context. Mm. I said that there are stakeholders in this. Mm. And that as we push our democracy forward and we try to find solutions, everybody must be held accountable to be responsible for their for their for their mandate mm. so i spoke about the media that was when i said that today you think i can just sit here and insult everybody wouldn't you draw my attention mm. uh, if i say somebody excuse me let's say so so and so you're a fool mm. is that trigger enough for you to come and beat me mm. but you draw my attention because it is provocative mm. it doesn't mean that somebody should come and beat me but you have a responsibility to control me isn't it the case mm. so when i say that how is that justification mm. i see isn't that what you are supposed to do when I also come on the show as a panelist, am I not supposed to be decorous enough? Am I not supposed to also stay within a certain bounds in expressing my view and expressing my opinion? Mm -hmm. That is the sort of conversation I'm saying we should have. And I will not allow anybody to draw me out of that. I think that in the, in the press freedom, in the free speech context, there are responsibilities and mandates for each of the stakeholders. And all of these stakeholders must be called out to live up to expectation. That is what I am saying. Because if we begin to say the Kufuado is this and that, that under President Mahama, there were several attacks on the media. Several of them. Some of them taken to the BNI, where people now have to go and mass up and get them released. There were several of them. Some of them will drop at the airport and they'll be arrested and taken to unknown locations. The media in this country. Should we continue to do this? Do you remember Kwesi Parker Wilson? Mm. This is 30th of October 2018. Kwesi Parker Wilson. This is his picture. That's his image here. He was beaten. 21. 2018. 30th of October 2018. But 2018. He was, no, he was beaten. Completely. Mm. By NDC hoodlums. Mm. You understand? Is it Daniel Kufado and the NDPP went to do that? But it would continue to happen because we do not address the issues. Mm. Because everything on Obama sought to do was to try and leave this show, create an impression that, oh, no, no. As for the NDC beating of Akusia, it was a problem they had with their party, and that in the line of fire, Akusia was there. Mm. That is what you say, and that, oh, you know, the MPP, they must, the, the leadership, but if, if you think that in your party it's okay, when your party people attack your party and it's not the media, so it's okay, they will transfer it to the media mm -hmm. and they will transfer it to other people who are not related. So, so indeed, none of them are okay. Very well. That, I mean, none that, of them that, are okay. That, that's a good I thing. think that the media, the panelists, the expression of free speech, 
the political activists like the young people who went to the UTV studio and those who went to Bita Kusia, all of them need to understand that we are in a society where if I think that what you are saying, I disagree with you, I am free to say it. My words are not weapons. Very well. So, so now, in, 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 in dealing with the issues, mm -hmm. I think, and, and this, this is a platform to educate as well, private stations, I mean, will you say that they have a right to empanel any kind of person they want to have a discussion and say what they want to say, and without the fear of being attacked by people who belong to the other side, who, who may disagree with what they say? I mean, and your people are listening, so we need to provide that education. Can private stations decide to empanel whoever they want to <coughs> empanel and discuss whatever they want to discuss once it's within the confines of the law? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, I can you, you are allowed to, if I are allowed to have a monologue, mm. and say, well, don't we have monologues in this country? We have shows where individuals say whatever they want to say. Good, I, good I, evening, I, Ghana. Good evening, Ghana. Um, the Johnny's Bites. Uh, Captain Smart Show on Onuya FM. There are some on XYZ, some on Radio Gold, some on Oman FM. It's there. We shouldn't even make it look like we don't have it. There are some radio stations that are one way. Who doesn't know that Oman FM is a pure, pure pro MPP and that it's purely MPP? Who doesn't know that Radio Gold XYZ are pure class FM and um, it's other um, related stations? Who does, what happens on Onuya FM? What happens on Onuya FM by Captain Smart? Is that balanced? But who cares? You cannot go and tell somebody who has set up his media, his business, as to how he should run it, so long as it's within the confines of the law. And the law gives us all the room to express our views. Mm. That is why I'm saying that I do not see anything wrong with what's going on. So, so the point is, when you meet your, your activists, your, your youth and all of that, you tell them... Exactly. This. That's why I told you initially that with the conversations I've had with them, if they had another opportunity to find themselves in that same space. So now they know, but yes. before they didn't know. Of course. So I'm saying that when you've, always, you've been meeting them forever, you know, and when you meet them and you're educating and you're talking them to, them to them on what to do, don't you tell them these things? We need to. And then again, it's not only about the activists. That is why I'm saying that when we get platforms like this, we shouldn't restrict it to just Dennis said this and Honorable Bauer said this and then we go away. We should also, by the end of the program, have used the platform to also do some education. Yeah, exactly what, because, what exactly we are doing. Because, you see, the people who went to the radio yesterday, not all of them are MPP executives. NDC, you mean? NDC executives. Mm. They are not necessarily NDC executives who are organized and they sit in a room and, and like Honorable Bauer said, spontaneous. They are wearing T-shirts. Some of them, they will go and call them from their homes and then they wear it on them. And then they will go and do whatever they have to do. So, in that bigger context of deepening our democracy and enlightening people on what free speech is. Tell them, all of us have that responsibility, not just the political parties in their meetings. Mm. Because you don't always have these attacks being executed by only party executives. Activists, some who never come to you at any party meeting, some who are only listening to the radio, some who are only following the news. So we need to continue the education because it is wrong. What the NDC guys did was wrong. What the MPP guys did was wrong. Under the MPP, there are media attacks. Under the NDC, there were media attacks. They haven't ended. Is it because that the, the state hasn't been decisive in dealing with them, punishing them, serving as a deterrent, so that the rest of them will see that if you go this way, this is what will happen. You know what, I sincerely, party you know what I sincerely think? Mm. What I sincerely think is the last part. Mm. The part where parties and party activists, both in MPP and NDC, political office holders, think that so long as I am seen to be doing things in defense of my party, uh, they will come to my defense. And you've seen it severally. Mm. You've seen instances where NDC or, um, people are arrested and the CID headquarters will be full of people. MPP people are arrested and the CID headquarters will be full of people. So I am of the strong view that when these people are perpetuating or engaging in some of these things, they seem to think, oh, don't worry. In the morning when Honorable Bauer and Miracles are discussing it, they will find a way to still make me look, mm. make me look good. I think that is, that is the reason. Mm. And I think that we also have that huge responsibility of educating people what the free speech truly means, mm. both practitioners and consumers. Mm. Because the guy who is consuming the things that I'm saying is getting angry. This morning, of all the things that I've said, I haven't really said much. I'm sure somebody is very, very, very angry. 
at what I am saying. But what can he do? He can't do much. Why? Because the law protects me to say what I want to say. Does that person understand that? Mm. Or he thinks that, no, even where I need to know about miracles, I should slap you. Is that the thing? So, so see, the political parties will do what they have to do. We will want them to be responsible. We want who guys to do. But you do what you will do. But the law enforcement is key. That's why the law enforcement st sits in the middle. So that the law enforcement in this case, I'm talking about the state. If the police or whoever is in charge arrests and deals with the matter conclusively, if you have to be jailed, you are jailed. If you have to be fined, you are fined. You know, I'm sure this will reduce. But you have, this, this, you have no this, idea what ignorance can do. This, 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 Hello, this is me. You lucky. have no idea what ignorance can do. Mm. And I still think that a lot of our challenges with our free speech and democracy is a matter of ignorance. I am telling you. Mm. And ignorance is so powerful that it is not afraid of jail until he gets into jail. I see. So when, because, comes, when the ignorance comes back from jail, so if, you, you, know, talk, you know what happens? Eventually, eventually, when the guy sits behind the the, the counter mm. and is now put in jail, then he begins to have. So when he comes back, he will talk to his friends. Oh, and and that, that message see, will go. That political and green alley. <laughs> that thing. <laughs> you, I, I have we need, you, that is you, why. You guys that that is why I think that we need to deepen mm. the sensitization mm. because as for ignorance. That is why somebody would really go and commit a crime and think that I can walk. Mm. Because he is just completely oblivious of it. Very well. He thinks that, in fact, let me tell you one last thing. Some of these young guys think that sometimes they are rather protecting their democracy. You heard mm. some of the boys say that, you know, let us also speak so that there is balance. You heard them talk about balance. Because in their mind, they think that when they make the argument of balance, you and I listening to them will say, oh yeah, they are making sense, they are saying some sense. But that is not the reality. And I would not follow the bandwagon of putting the blame on NDC or MPP and who does much and who doesn't do much. See, I can pull for you tens of media abuse under the NDC in the eight years period. And I can pull for you tens of media abuse under the MPP. And so if we say we are going to equalize, we are going to get the numbers mm, to equalize. Well. But that is not the way to go. Well, so, 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 long. Yeah, so let, let me put my question. You, you, yeah. you can deal with it. Yeah. So we've seen the outpouring of a lot of statements, condemnations, etc., from the Ministry of Information, the MPP itself, you know, the NCC. You know, a lot of bodies have condemned this. Beyond the condemnation, what should we be saying? He raises a point about education and ignorance and all of that. Beyond the condemnation, what do we do? He says, okay, thank you very much. He says, Salam. That is why. I indicated and I tried drawing a line between just what you call the ignorant, quote unquote, for, uh, want of a better word, ignorant people who do not really know the repercussions of what they do mm. and what are the rights that have been guaranteed under the, the 1992 constitution, mm. like our party followers and what have you. I, I intentionally drew a line between them and, for example, top party officials, state institutions also involved in the things mm. like this. And that's why I tried drawing a line between the two. And I'm saying that, look, if you look under the presidency of Akufuado, there have been one too many mm. in terms of state getting directly involved in this. The Bobia has issue. You remember when he, just on a show, he was having a program. Mm. The police stormed there and arrested him because he had said certain things. Mm. That's under Akufuado's government. You have a situation where they storm your own studios, city and arrest a helpless lady. Mm. And her crime was just because she received files, of video files from another colleague who had also been arrested. So you are seeking to separate... You see, yes, I'm trying to you see... You know, ordinary must, people... Yes, you see, there from, must be leadership. You see, if I sit down as an ordinary member of the party, and I hear my deputy uh, communications director, national, trying to tell me on another station, what am I doing when this is what is being done to our party on UTV? I would draw a line between the reaction of the, the person who really responded to that particular conversation and the person who really instigated it. Because the person should know better. And that is why you are a party officer. You work within the confines of the law. And you know the basis under which the fact that the, the same law that allows you to exist as a political party is the same law that allows a media house to also exist. Mm. And so if you are the one doing that, then that's a problem. That's why I tried drawing the line between that. Yeah. And I'm also indicating very clearly that, look, I agree that we must, and I, if you recall my, uh, my opening statements, I had stated that, look, it's an infant democracy. Mm. We're still in the very infant stages. And therefore, there are a lot of things we will have to learn. But I have always believed that as you move on, 
I don't expect things that were done in 1993 uh, mm. to be done in 2023. I'm assuming that over the period would have been developing, would have been improving. That's what I'm, I'm saying. But it appears that since, 2027, uh, since 2017, up to now, unfortunately, in the space of when it comes to the issues about free speech, the issues about independence of the media, and then to give the media the, 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 the freedom to be able to operate and operate very well, mm. I think that we are deteriorating. Mm. And I'm giving you instances of state operators mm. and party officials dealing in this. And these are the areas that I think that they are not excusable. Mm. Because for but example... They, they, they ought to know better. They ought to know better. They ought to know better. And so when you see things like that happening, there becomes a problem. I was just trying to look. The last I was checking on, you see, they, they normally will even put in terms of the grading of our uh, the media the uh, press freedom mm -hmm. the grade there are different they weight they, they weight them differently the actions of the states mm -hmm. and the actions of just individuals they are not weighed on the same levels mm -hmm. and so the actions of the state carries a bigger oh. uh, a bigger points in terms of things like that so if you have a situation where the state itself is the one in encroaching on the freedoms of the media uh, 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 of the media then it becomes a and that is the point i was trying to draw the other point I was just trying to make very clear, I said, look, if, look, the Ododio case that he said I tried making the, look, my initial thing I said, unreservedly, I was apologizing. In fact, you remember that off air, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that this is what happened until you told me, and I said, oh, this is bad. You understand? Me? I tried, uh, uh, what do you call it, condemning it. But I'm just trying to state very clearly that when we are, let's not justify their behavior. Because the moment you start justifying, it means that there must be... The, I mean, how do you justify going to steal? Mm. You understand the point? Yeah. You can't justify going to sleep, uh, steal. Yeah. And so, I, 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 in my opinion, I think that, look, under Nanado, they have the problems. And I've just given you, we, we currently we now have the worst ranking. Last year, we were 60th. Well ranking. This year, we are 62nd. Mm. There must be something we are doing wrong. I see. And that's the point I'm just saying. So, so, so deal with uh, the, what we can do now. A lot of condemnation has been issued. Look, I think that continuously, mm. as continuously, we need to have education. Mm. And I believe that that's why, for example, you had the NCCE mm. getting involved in some of these things. The role of the NCCE at one point or that is supposed to also educate the people to know that mm. these are your civic responsibilities. Mm. These are the things you should expect of mm. others also doing. Because, you see, we have not lived in a country where people have been used to this. Because democracy in itself has been has not been around for uh, for a very large extent, our governance system has been uh, permeated with militarism, mm. and so we've not had really developed that particular culture. So education, constant education, is what we go. But I think the greater part of it is that party leaders must show by example, mm. state institutions must show by example. It is when they see things like this, for example, if they if. If I'm seated in my house mm. and I realize that a policeman goes into a media house to do X, Y, Z to a media person, mm. and the next moment I read that the, the state uh, has decided to pun punish that particular state official for mm. what he did, I will ask myself, if this is a policeman who went and did this, if this is a national security man who went and did this, and this is what they did to him, then if I make an attempt to go there, I may, I may be in uh, trouble. So sometimes our actions in itself can be a source of education for what they call it, our people. Mm. So it must be first, constant education. The NCCE should be able to see into those things. Political party itself should be able to educate their people. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, party leaders and state institutions must show by example mm. that we can be tolerant towards uh, what they call it, the media. Mm. And that's all that yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I see. Uh, this uh, was a total uh, matter. Franklin, um, uh, the, yeah, this, you know, this. The, the, you know, uh, the, yes, the, 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 the NCC is issued a statement also condemning this. But beyond statement from the NCC and all those relevant bodies condemning this, what must we be doing? Is it uh, this four squarely uh, or mainly within the, the, the remit of the NCC funding? This, you know, this, what, this, what's this, it? This has, sorry, this has nothing to do with civic education. Mm. This is just absolutely yeah, that ought to be dealt with head on. No, but but, but think, tolerance. I mean, well, being well, tolerant well, of well, others' well, political views. It's well, part of the things. It seems to be. We've been very tolerant, and I disagree with Mr. Bauer that uh, it is an infant democracy. <laughs> On the contrary, uh, we've actually been democratic even before the colonialists came, right? And even when the colonialists came as well, 
developments of democracy at some point, right? Even though, of course, some of those who decided to express themselves were calmly de dealt with. The fact of the matter really is that Kaki's behavior must be must be dealt with head on. Mm. These are matters for the security agencies to deal with. Anybody who does anything untoward must be arrested and prosecuted. That's all. This whole thing about calling on leaders to speak to them as if they are some children. No, 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 no. We are not dealing with civics or uh, class one to five, six, six kids. No. These are persons who believe that they were acting in the best interest of their parties. Mm. I, don't, I don't understand what that means. I mean, this is a show... To, for crying out loud, this has I've been watching since it started, by the way, this UTV show. And this whole call about bias and paneling, for me, was even, it was, it was, it was anathema. It was something strange to me because I've never experienced it on the show, right? So it was even, it, I mean, the concoction of the story to suggest that the panel, paneling itself is biased is quite frankly an insult to some of us who watch that program. Hmm. These persons must be dealt with as the police has done. Because, you see, if we don't do these things, right, if we don't deal with them the way they should be dealt with, and we allow these to permit, we are getting to another election. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get worse. Don't forget, these things translate into even security operatives killing people uh, during elections, for which for several minutes, well, several months after the elections, if not years, we've not had anything from the state entity as well. Not even the president has spoken to the unfortunate killing of those persons who died during the election. Was it 2020, I think? Mm. And, and and we've not had anything. So we should not we should not glorify these acts by suggesting that as if these persons are, don't know what they're actually about. They know. They know why they went there. They know why they are engaged in such acts. Look at the guys who are who are vandalizing the, the, the NDC, uh, what, what's it called, the materials at the NDC program, and then in the course of that, beating your own journalists. Mm. These are not kids. These these are persons who know what they are about, and they know very well that they shouldn't be behaving the, those thuggish uh, ways. So they must be dealt with by the law, mm. and I recommend the police if they act swiftly as they did with the UTV issue. That's mm. what we should do. Mm. So what, what should happen if the guys, for example, say they've regretted what happened, they apologize, and they approach UTV, for example, for settlement? Uh, you, you think UTV should look at that, or UTV should insist that the, the process continues to the end? Well, expressing remorse is one thing, and I think that in life, well, people make mistakes and whatever. We have to examine whether they are first-time offenders, by the way. I mean, that's the only way <laughs> we will look into this matter. And they must come on the show and render apology profusely and say that for the rest of their lives, the rest of their grandchildren's lives, they will not commit to doing such things like that. Maybe that's the only time we would, would allow them. But uh, let's not dignify these incidents by suggesting that persons who do these things do not know what they are about. They, they perfectly are. Mm. They, and so, yes, they, if they are remorseful, well, yes, but we should, we should equally be punishing persons who do this kind of thing. I, I see. So I'm wrapping up on this. I'm almost moving on. To, but I just want a quick one um, from, from Dennis. Do we, I've not heard the boys apologize. I only, I've only heard their elders apologizing on their behalf. Is there any plan to get them to apologize officially, or you think once the elders have apologized, that is fine? Oh, I mean, I, I think that... That's why I commended the manner and way within which Richard and Kujo handled the matter. Mm. And since then, there's been a lot of engagement between the party and UTV. I mean, the general secretary has been there. Beyond that, even the national chairman and his team also met them. A lot of conversations have happened, you know, all in the effort to ensure that these things are, are reduced. But, of course, even in our Ghanaian setting, you know how we do it. Even when we're growing up, at all times, there must be a certain within which you'd have to apologize to uh -huh. the, the, the one you have offended. And for me, I think if that happens, that would also be good. Uh -huh. it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how, but however it is, um, these young people owe UTV and, and its viewers an apology uh -huh. and, and, and some remorse. And like I said, I've spoken with them. I'm very sure that based on the conversations that have gone on and the enlightenment that they've received, they would have handled this matter in a different way, in a more civil way, if, if it should come up again. So, yeah, I'm completely with you on that. 
my advocacy is that we must do everything possible to ensure that a lot more Ghanaians understand what free speech means mm. and become more tolerant towards free speech. Mm. If somebody is saying something that you disagree, allow the person. When you have your turn, you will say what you have to say. Mm. That is a principle that I have, I have mastered and I think that we should be able to imbibe this in, 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 in our people. We cannot toy with free speech. And so whatever we need to do to ensure that we enlighten people more, that, that, that should be done. Bawa, well, do you share the same view? Good yeah, I do. And I just, I just realized that uh, a statement dated on the 14th of, uh, October. 14th of October, mm. uh, our National Communication Officer has issued a statement condemning the attack. Oh, okay. On, uh, on your, on your, your listen, mm. and apologizing. Okay. So, but the regional, know, the regional, the regional, <coughs> the regional, the, the regional office. Yes. Also did same yesterday. Yes. So I, I just, I just realized that they, 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 they they've done that. But you see, um, the interesting part of this thing that any uh, that I realized was the banter between GGA uh, and and, and Kojo Pongo. Kojo Pongo. The GGA described uh, Kojo Pongo as a statement as wobbling, as wobbling and pale. Mm. And they, they looked at it compared to other statements he had issued in the past and his actions in the past. You see, I think that what we should all be looking at is that when we are offering leadership, let it be said very clearly that if, for example, an NDC man has done something and I am supposed to comment on it, I should be fair and know that the only comparison will be with the law and nothing else. I, 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 I think that uh, going forward, look, we really need to do a lot of education. Um, I think that as a, as a country, uh, we must also improve on our level of tolerance. We seem not to just be tolerant towards each other. You even sometimes see it on platforms, like when you when you're having discussions, people simply cannot even tolerate other people's views, and so we may have to also tend to exercise a bit of it mm -hmm. in our in our actions, whether it is intra-party, inter-party, or what have you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's level of tolerance because democracy in itself gives us the opportunity to have divergent views. And if we were all born to think the same way and act the same way, then I don't think. God needed to have brought how many billions of people, uh, people on the year. Have just gotten one person? Mm. All of us have our own thoughts, our own beliefs. So I think that that's the way we should look at it. But more importantly, I think that the state and our party officials at the highest level mm. should be seen to be doing more. Because that is the only way we can. Go. The only thing we have now is democracy. Yeah. The only thing we can do is to improve upon it. Mm. And one of the tenets of democracy is free speech. Mm. That's why the Ashantis even call it Kabinamin they've described democracy as free speech mm. that's what they just described democracy that's how they name democracy mm. so it is it is it is hinged on that and so let's see how we can really improve upon those mm. things and as various political parties try to uh, stay away from such acts mm. very well so so uh, this is a big issue uh, we're coming to you live uh, on City TV, on City FM, on Facebook and YouTube as well. We've been looking at the, the issue about media intolerance, whether the media is under siege. You've seen two incidents this week, one over the weekend and just one yesterday, uh, against the media in, in, by the two major political parties, I mean, elements in those parties. And uh, the conclusion really is that a lot more needs to be done. Those people must be punished, and, and we do not have to continue uh, in this life. We don't have to encourage it, and we need to do more to ensure that these um, attacks and, and acts of intolerance are nipped in the bud. Um, so we have a major topic, which is we have a major issue, which we'll deal, which we will deal with in respect of uh, the corruption, government's battle against corruption, and what has happened this week. But before that, I mean, uh, this week also has seen quite something unprecedented in the Akosombo area. The Akosombo dam spillage has led to uh, uh, a lot of people being displaced. And, and the pictures and the videos we'll show you on the screen soon are, are so, you know, terrible. And, and people even do not have places to, they do not have food to eat. NADMO is being called in and they don't appear to be well equipped. And quite a number of things, you know, are, are happening. We will we'll, we'll quickly go to that area, speak to 
our guys on the ground to, to help us appreciate what has been happening so far. But, uh, Dennis, I know you, you, you have been following this. Just quick comments on this. Um, the, the spillage of the Akosumbu Dam, um, it, it appears this is one of the very first time. I can't for sure say this is the very first time it has happened. But typical, or usually, we know about Bagri Dam spillage and all the harbour we cause to in the northern part of the country. Now, Akosumbu Dam, the, 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 the dam gets spilled. The people claim they did not know about it. I also wonder how it will be spilled without giving them information. Or maybe the information did not get to them adequately enough. And we've seen this, this, this serious I issue. Um, NADMO doesn't appear to, to be well equipped. Uh, and I saw yesterday that government is set up an interministerial committee chaired by the chief of staff to see what he can do about this. Your general thoughts on, on the Akosobu matter, the, uh, disaster, if I may call it. Well, I think I, I'm very limited. On, on that particular subject matter, especially because, um, you know, it, it's an emergency that has come, a lot of things moving around. What I have seen is as much as you, 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 you have seen with images and people trying to evacuate, and I've seen them, um, the districts involved have also had their emergency teams on the ground trying mm -hmm. to help to, to resolve, but because they are in the middle of providing reliefs and, and support, they haven't been able to really put together anything mm -hmm. for us to see and, and they understand the extent. Because, I mean, I spoke with some of the DCs in the past three days. So, Jaman, Norton, Southon, you know, they are, they are almost about six or seven districts within, within that enclave. But maybe what I, would, I, I, I think we will do is to wait for maybe between today and Monday mm -hmm. when some you know, um, aggregation of the issues are put together, mm. and we, we would understand. Because I've also not seen much of uh, information coming from the VRA. Yes, yeah, and on, that, that, on, that's quite concerning. Exactly, on this matter mm. as well. But like I said, I'm very, very limited mm. when it comes to this emergency matter. Mm. And maybe when we have a lot more information, we should be able to, to, to speak to it. I mean, mm. the Interministerial Committee has started working. Um, they are putting interventions for, for, for the community and all of that, but it, it would be difficult for us to speak to it now until maybe um, we, we hear something from them and also hear from, from, from the municipalities and districts involved. Mm, very well. Uh, 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 yeah, so um, obviously um, I empathize with what I call it, the victims of these floods mm. because basically it's so discomforting to realize that you have to be displaced because of water and other things. But I see, and again, VRA has no option than to spill. Mm -hmm. There's a maximum. Okay, you, you are an energy person. Yes, there's a maximum level mm -hmm. that the dam can take. Mm -hmm. When they delay in things like that, the replication is worse than we are seeing now. Mm -hmm. Because when you then have the whole, the integrity of the dam mm -hmm. compromised, that is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And so VRA has no. No, over what they call it. But, but was it not something VRA would have known? No, so that's the point I'm just saying. So I'm just trying to say that spilling is mm. nothing. Mm. Is so so you, have, you, you have some some like some videos, or yes. or pictures. Particularly of what, at the time, how, what, how the communities around the dams yes. actually looks like, and these are these are ordinarily dry lands. Yes. But the spillage is this one is yes. caused. And particularly when you have a situation where, in fact, uh, we had to also spill. Mm. So part of we, when we spills, it comes to Akosombo. Okay. Then Akosombo has to spill to go to the other side. Mm. Then spills and goes. And so it appears all our hydro dams have all reached their, their, yeah, their, limit. Their, their limit. And therefore they need to spill. That being said, I remember in 2010 when we had this problem again. Mm. I remember when that happened. Then I was at the Ministry of Energy. Mm. Before the spillage was done, for about two weeks, we went through all the catchment areas in terms of uh, the assemblies to <laughs> warn them that these were the consequences and therefore they needed to relocate. Mm. I'm not too sure whether this was done or not. Mm. So that is the first thing. I'm not too sure. I don't have information, information. as to whether they mm. really want the various district assemblies mm. to take note and ensure that all the people who, who are likely to be, uh, what do you call it, affected, they be moved. Now, in your intro, you realize that you also indicated that uh, you are so, you, you've not heard VRA make a statement. Yes. And I'm also very surprised about mm. that. Particularly when, by law, we also have what we call the Volta River Authority Resettlement Fund. Mm -hmm. That is used for victims, that, you know, when there was a relocation of the. So there's a fund that has been dedicated and is established by law 
that takes care of issues like this. So I'm not too sure how the VRA and for that matter the board of this particular fund, what they are doing with that. And so it's something the VRA will have to come to us to talk to us. Mm -hmm. But you know where the big problem is? You see, you said that NADMO seems to also not to be equipped enough mm -hmm. to be able to do that. NADMO is not equipped, and that's the truth. You know that if you look at the source of funding of NADMO, part of it is supposed to come from what we call the District Assemblies Common Fund, the DACF. About 5% of it, of the DACF, is supposed to be sent to NADMO for, to fight emergencies like this. As I speak to you now, they are in areas of about three years. You understand about me? Mm -hmm. They are in arrears of about three years. Mm -hmm. And so they simply do not even have the money to really do that. Then the question you ask yourself, how come that for three years, and that will be how many quarters? That four times three. Mm -hmm. That's 12 quarters. That how come that for 12 quarters, the NADMO has not received, it had releases from the District Assembly's Common Fund? It is because the District Assembly's Common Fund itself is not getting releases from the Ministry of Finance. Mm. Even though by law they, they have a ring fenced. You yes, know, and you see, this is not money that you are supposed to go and look for. The law says that when you collect all our revenues and other things, you collect them. Mm. When you collect them, before you even start spending, mm. X amount of money should be sent to the District Assembly's Common Fund to be used. So when they then get it, there's a sharing, there's an allocation, uh, what they call formula, that is being given. And there's a, there's a percentage that is given to NADMO to use in terms of fighting situations like this. Mm. But NADMO, as we speak, now do not have those funds because DACF is not giving them the money. And DACF is not giving them the money because the Minister of Finance is also not releasing money to them. Mm. So that is, uh, um, that's one aspect. Even to the extent, you know that, as we speak now, even sometimes DACF has to go and borrow money mm. from commercial banks. Really? Borrow money. In fact, the latest was to, from Access Bank. Had to go and borrow money from commercial banks to be able to meet the requirements, and because of this whole issue of capping uh, the capping law that has come, yeah. the amount of money even assuming that even which comes is not enough. Yes, so even apart from the district assembly, even the uh, sorry the NADMO, even the district assemblies, the amount of money that is brought to the one they don't release it, and the amount of money they bring to them is not even enough to take care of sometimes even their internal issues. And so don't, they are also not equipped enough to help their people because these are, these are communities that fall under assemblies. Mm. And all, ordinarily, the assemblies would have also wanted to help. But they equally do not have money because there are no releases. And any time even the release comes, the truth of the matter is that it's not even enough to take care of the activities of the assembly. So uh, as time goes on, we'll get to know what... Uh, but I think that VRA may have to... Uh, do more. Do more okay. in terms of. So, I, I think I'll have this information for okay, sure. okay. for this. So, so um, I'll come to Franklin and yeah. then we'll wrap up. So I think I, the, I think the, the, let, me, let, let me do a zoom. To be fair to. Let, let me do a zoom quickly. Okay. So after a zoom, I'll go to Franklin and then you will conclude, okay. right? Before we go to the next topic. So um, Fred Duho is in the area. Fred Duho is my colleague here at City FM. Um, we sent them there to go see. Oh, they've been there for a while now. Fred Duho, uh, good morning. Welcome to the big issue. Um, what has been the situation? We've been there for a couple of days now. How is the situation? Is the spillage ended? Are we still spilling? Is the situation getting better? Uh, the floodwaters, are they receding? What can you tell us? Uh, so, what I can report is that we went first to the phone uh, station of the VRA, and over there, uh, I can tell you that they have currently opened uh, about six or four out of their total number of. Um, I mean, valves that they are supposed to open. And uh, the fact remains that they, the fact remains that they are currently trying to control the spillage. Uh -huh. They are trying to, yeah, they are trying to control the spillage. So, in, in essence, the fact is that if they are supposed to open the whole valve as they have it now, uh, the disaster is going to be more uh, aggravated. We moved from the current side and we come to Akosombos to be precise. And that place, they also have about 12 valves. As of now, they open eight of them and they are controlling it in a way. And we've now moved to a community that is closer to the Akosombo uh, area. And this artist are telling us that ever since the spillage started, they've lost almost every point that they had on the river. 
uh, in FN, the official folks, they've done their own funds, they've invested, they pumped money into this whole thing, and they were not really constant ahead of time. By the time they could realize it was just a game to the ceiling, and the work that came uh, so quickly that it didn't stop it any of their uh, fishing stuff. So you see on the river, well, maybe this thing is broken out, so you cannot see really, but behind me, you see the distraction that has been caused to the fish pond that they usually have. We see their fish, their nets and everything, and the people who are actually worried and devastated about the situation. I am drawing closer for you to see if you can still hear me, solo, for you to just appreciate the level of distraction. So you have a tree in the water there. So we are just right by the Gulf Star River, and that is a tree that has fallen each point that these people have. And all the things that you have has totally been washed away by this village. And some houses, we understand, uh, are also to last along the banks of the river. So generally, the same part we say the detail here. I want to put a record that this is the eastern region. We are, we, are currently, we are currently in the eastern region. So uh, earlier on Thursday, we were actually in the three more uh, 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 districts, actually. The central town, south town, and the uh, north town. And Nefer, I can still be part of it, has been the hardest hit, where almost all the buildings that are along the banks of the river quickly submerge in the uh, river, uh, in, the, in the water. So, generally, what we've seen so far from Thursday, giving this exclusive coverage that we've been bringing our viewers uh, along uh, this whole stretch, I can tell you that that of the North Tongue situation and that of Central Tongue has been very dire. Uh, I can tell you that that of South Tongue is to that effect. Most of the affected facilities are the uh, hospitality facilities you see uh, along the banks of the river. Part of the Holy Trinity Park, part of the Sugarfe Beach Resort, part of the um, and almost all of those security facilities to see are totally affected. Now, on the eastern region side, we understand as a people uh, has also been, uh, portions of it uh, has also been submerged in water. So, generally, the situation is there, and the people, uh, I mean, their livelihood uh, have been taken away, and they are looking forward to the uh, government agencies in charge, like Magmo, and even the state to come to their aid. I can also add again that so uh, we want to uh, the water is authority to be precise. So we're trying to gain access to the facility and we were actually denied. But what we are told over there is that uh, we are going to spill more water in the coming hours or even days. And uh, the, the committee that was formed or put together by the president, sent by the chief of staff, the Honorable Primar of Paris, uh, we understand they were in some meeting earlier, so we couldn't speak to the directors of the DRA who could grant us permission to gain access to their facility. So generally, I would say the, on the part of the committee, they also started their sitting from what we've gathered, and the folks that are affected, they are also generally open or managing to cope with the situation as it stands now. And those have they are also relocating to higher ground seller. Very well. I, I'm grateful for your time. Thanks so much for, for speaking to us. Very bad situation we have out there. The pictures we are seeing are not very palatable. We, we, we hope that uh, you take care of yourselves well and bring us the best pictures and reports as always so our listeners and viewers can, can know uh, what really is, is happening. Thanks so much, Fred Duho, and the team for speaking to us from the uh, Akosombo Volta region, um, Enclave, for you said we're in the Eastern region. Uh, that part of town. Thank you so much. So, so Fred, uh, uh, Franklin, quickly, this, this is a very uh, uh, terrible situation, but as Bauer rightly said, it's, it's, it's important, it's necessary that, that it happens. Uh, maybe the information to the people and a few other things maybe could have been better, but it's, it's a necessary exercise that had to be done nonetheless. Oh, without a doubt. And uh, my heart goes out to all those who have been affected. As I understand, there was some level of information and uh, indeed, um, I'm sure that probably it wasn't too much. Sorry, it wasn't detailed enough. Because I think I had the, one of the DCs suggest uh, that 
well, they didn't have enough resources to be able to go to every uh, necessary town to at least tell them exactly what had happened. And I was a bit <laughs> sad that, um, I, I mean, that, that really should be happening. Um, otherwise, it's rather unfortunate, and I think that resources should be given to the authorities um, to ensure that next time these things do not happen. Maybe we should have a long settled resettlement plan as well, because as increased weather changes, um, climate change and all of that, I think these things will be will become the norm rather than the ordinary, sorry, rather than out of the ordinary. Very well. Thanks so much, Franklin. Um, uh, uh, Dennis had a quick update. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I just, I just got some additional information mm. I thought we should share, especially mm. with the VRA. Mm. So like Franklin said, the VRA actually, uh, weeks before now, mm. had embarked on it. And they seem to have, because um, according to what they sent me, they have an emergency preparedness mm. plan, which they actually implement with the communities. Mm. And I, um, they've been doing that. I read here almost about six different releases mm. that they've done in the period. And according to some of the DCs also, VRA released resources mm. for them to be engaging the communities sort of there. But if you look at the situation there, it looks as if it's almost uh, uh, unavoidable mm. for some of them. Because uh, looking at the level of sensitization, and what, you can't move your fish pond in, in two weeks. You can't move your, your house. Some of them, the houses are covered. and all. It's a very difficult situation. And, and my heart really goes out to them. What, what I think should be done, especially from the VRA, is that they really, really utilize the fund that they have mm. to support to support members members of this of this community I, I know that in that enclave some of them have in the past been relocated if you look at where some of the um, the dam covers there were communities and people living there and um, they were relocated some also feel very attached to some of these areas that relocating is a, is a difficulty for them but i really think that vre uh, should should really invest in, in, in relieving some of these some of these um, 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 victims because it's a very difficult situation if you look at look at the water level some are almost covering the, the mm -hmm. window the windows and, and all of that and it's covering a very large very large, portion of, large the portion 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 of the area mm -hmm. but to be fair to VRE they, they they have evidence to show that they've been engaging them mm -hmm. over over the period but, so, mm -hmm. just two things mm -hmm. uh, when um, Franklin was speaking mm. that he had uh, an assembly, uh, sorry, uh, 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 no, a DC mm. say that um, they were they were told, but they didn't also have the resources mm. to go around. It underscores the point. So, that's, 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 but that's, I that's think the other other yeah. point that we need to look at is that say, if you look at the uh, the Palugu hydro project yeah. that was being uh, envisaged. The studies have been done. Part of it was to forestall problems like this, mm -hmm. because then it contains well, most of this water is coming from the back. Yeah. You know, that's where the voltage source is from the north, and so they would have uh, dumped Dumb, most yes. of these things so, so to be used for more uh, what they call it, useful things mm -hmm. like uh, hydro, for uh, agriculture and what have you. Yeah. But after, for uh, since for since 2018, when there was this whole uh, f uh, big ceremony. In fact, if you are going to Bolga, the only thing that has been done in that particular project is a sandboard that has been put at the junction that goes to the project site, and the one that has been put on your way to RCC. Apart from these two things, nothing has been done. Meanwhile, it was actually even listed as one of the achievements of, uh, what do you call it, the, the government, when they published their achievement, the, when they did the tracking, project tracking and what have you. Mm. So sometimes when we when we when we agree to do certain things let's mm -hmm. do them and you see the project the palco project was not just conceived under this government it had been sponsored the feasibility study and everything had been done by the world bank mm -hmm. fin financed by the world bank between 2014 and 2016 that the studies had been done and therefore they, there was not the need to really do the construction based on the effects and what have you i see the only thing that we got was signboards I see. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's suffering from the general economic crunch and all of that, which, which we understand is global. So. All right. So, no, no, it's not global. All right. This, that's, is, that's this, is, this, this is this is this is global. Is okay. This is, this is the big issue. Uh, yeah. We we will take a short break. When we return, we get to the discussion on uh, the government's battle against corruption and look at the various facets of that. Um, Martin Kibu joins the panel. And uh, uh, so, Edward Bowles to be here, Franklin Kujo, as always, Dennis Abwaji, 
miracles uh, also will also be here. Um, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> All right, you, you're, welcome to, you're welcome back to the program. Um, this is a big issue. Um, a number of your messages um, have come through. Uh, this one from uh, Jules Adobo in last says, Good morning, Salam. Attacks on journalists everywhere must be condemned. You know, certain terms. When you have a president who, who tend to clear or protect party members in a clear corruption case, and even I asked that a committee was set up, uh, what did you see? I want to sympathize with my people along the voter league. Ghanaians are not angry enough. Um, okay, Jones. All right. Um, Yesu V says, what the VRA is doing now is never a controlled spillage. As of now, houses are covered with water. Cemeteries are flooded. Schools are submerged in water. Public toilets are now ponds. And a whole lot of things happening in the three tongue districts. Why the delay in doing the spillage? Why wait for the dam to fill up to about 100% uh, before you, to full valve, opening. I mean, I think you want to say before the valve is open, something like this will be clearly appears to, to understand what is happening in the area. Uh, we understand there's some committee doing some work and, and some resolution will come. But indeed, as my guests have explained, it's a necessary evil and, 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 and we'll see. All right. So um, let's move on to the next matter. We're looking at a government's battle against corruption. A lot has happened this week. Atuisen has been jailed. AG's report on the reform party is, 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 is came out. I don't know how, whether it was leaked or released. I'm not sure. And the OSP is running battle with Cecilia Dapa. The OSP wants Cecilia Dapa, the judge on the matter, uh, removed his petition. The CJ, the CJ will have to decide whether indeed uh, the allegations of prejudice are well founded. If, if so, yes, maybe the judge will be removed. If not, uh, the judge will continue his work. Um, I guess for this segment, uh, Martin Pebu, private legal practitioner, joined the panel. Then it's Miracle Sabuadi, presidential staffer. Franklin Kujo, president of Money Africa. And Edward Bauer, member of parliament for Boku Central on the NDC. Uh, uh, it's Bongo. Oh, sorry, Bongo. Bongo. Bongo, Bongo. Bongo. Uh, to Central uh, 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 on the ticket of the NDC. <coughs> no panel for Bongo. Uh, apologies. All right, so Martin, I, I started with you. It's been a very heavy week for matters around corruption. I don't know whether it is positive that we keep talking about corruption. I don't know what it means for the perception of corruption, etc. But some activities happening this week. Mm -hmm. the, the, let's start off with the OSP. Mm -hmm. There was supposed to be an application to a bridge time, which was actually heard and granted. Mm -hmm. And the main application itself could not be heard mm -hmm. because the OSP mm -hmm. wrote to the CJ or petitioned the CJ to remove uh, the judge from the matter. Uh, I mean, tell us, is it is it strange to have the time abridged for applications that are citing reasons of hardship, et cetera, as the Slender Party did. And is it also strange to have a party right to the CJ <coughs> to remove a judge from the matter? And under what circumstances can we see this? Okay, so answer to both questions, no. Mm. It's not strange at all to have a, uh, the time for hearing an application being abridged. And it's also not strange for lawyers to petition the Chief Justice to remove a judge mm. from a matter. No, mm. these are things that happen very often in our courts. Mm. All right? And also your preliminary comment that this is a week heavy on corruption. Mm. Yes, I agree. Mm. So I'll start from that side and mm. come to the substantive. Mm. It's good we keep talking. Yes, because a problem well diagnosed mm. is half solved. So if we don't talk, we are not likely to get the best solutions. Mm. So we have to keep talking. In actual fact, we are not talking enough at mm. all. We are on, not talking on, on enough. Corruption. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we are not talking enough about corruption because corruption is actually swallowing us up. Mm. It's all over the place. So we need to ratchet up the conversation, make corruption front and center of all our public discourse. Mm. We are not talking enough. Because the thing is going on on Bridal, as far as I'm aware, the last a certain report I saw of different people have different accounts. Somebody said about 80% of the contracts that have been awarded so far under this regime fall under sole sourcing or single mm. source procurement. It's like, wow, I get time to uh, verify. But at least we all accept that sole sourcing or single source procurement is still a huge problem. Mm. Okay, feeding in corruption. Gabi, when the, these guys were in the position, said sole so, uh, so sourcing is thievery. Mm. Sole so sourcing is thievery under the Mahama administration. So we expected that when they came, they would reduce it. Number two, earlier in the week, we had a big conversation about asset declaration. Yeah. You know, uh, the Human Rights and Governance Center. Mm. They are trying to push so that under the new bill, every uh, public officer will publish his assets. When the assets have been declared, they will be published. Of course, we are asking for online, like mm. be done in a website, so that 
the cost can come down, all those things, right? So these are some of the things. And then, Madam Sisley, that price matter. We have to keep talking. We are not talking enough mm. at all because corruption is so rife. Look, just, we will not mention it, but just uh, three days ago or so, or in the last one week, I had another senior uh, presidential staffer. Over a million dollars was stolen from his home. Mm. People are trying to keep it quiet. But we have to talk. Listen, in a democracy, some people have to talk. And even sometimes unjustifiably pay the price. But mm. that is it. Yeah, a very senior staffer. It's close to $2 million. was just stolen from his home. It's like, wow. So you see why we keep repeating that. Let's search this, uh, this and the officers at the presidency. Let's search the ministers. Let's search them. We should search their Yes, homes. we've made a report. So by sitting down here and reporting that we hear, we hear they have monies in their homes, that's a report. But it's how you for the if you want, they, they will clear their homes of the monies. Oh, look at Madame Dapa. Do you see the, the time between the uh, report of the case and the time OSP? So went. there was nowhere to put the money, or the money was uh, too exactly. much. Exactly. Uh, the monies are huge. Ah, uh, they are huge. Mm. And we are just playing. We are just play, uh, playing. Okay? And playing ostrich. The money is in their homes, Dennis. Your people, <laughs> money is in their homes. Listen, if we don't do this, we are not fighting corruption. Mm. If we don't search all the ministers, forget it. We mm. are just playing. The money is in their homes. And we sitting here, I'm saying that this is a report, this mm. complaint. You see, earlier on, I've been talking about this minister who has four houses back to back, contiguous in East Legon. Mm. Yeah, some radio stations have started talking about it. Giddy, 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 giddy. Very soon, uh, his name will be put out. We'll push back. Who we'll push back? Listen, we have to fight. We are men. If you can't fight like a man, forget it. Forget it. Look, Socrates said it. Yeah, listen, in Plato's book, The Republic, there is no honest politician. Mm. There is no honest politician. Uh, so I'm not sure the politician flanking you. Uh, uh, oh, uh, uh, honorable, uh, uh, but, uh, but it's a that. reality. Mm -hmm. You see, he said it. To every rule, you may get an exception. <laughs> but the main rule, so what I'm saying is that we don't have the right mindset for fighting corruption mm. we sit down where well, the larger majority of our people because they don't have access to much information and all that they say oh but he's a big man uh, he was doing this business that 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 and so if he's holding anything it's from business mm. yeah i remember the last time i came here or was it the last before i came here i met one of the panelists here then he sort to tell me that oh he had this this business i said master master i remember you in 2016 you hardly had a job. I met you somewhere. You were begging for a job. Right now, no, you're driving a big car. Yeah, one of the panelists. <laughs> yeah. I said, don't do that. Don't tell me this. Tell that to the Marines. So the thing is that we must search the ministers. If we are not searching the ministers, forget about this fight. Uh, 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 but the, this search, I wonder how, how, how it will One be. by one. One by one. <laughs> we'll line them. One by one. But wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be populist <laughs> and too revolutionary? Uh, but you need a revolution to fight corruption. That is the uh, statement. That mm. is it. You need so a we revolution. land them up today, Minister of Finance. Yeah. Let's go to your house. Let's go and search. But we don't tell for you we search on weekday. <laughs> we just line them. Then OSP will rope in the police. So we just <laughs> swoop all on one day. So IG, and IG can do that. Ah, IG, of course, has had problems recently. But I still support him, notwithstanding uh, <laughs> criticizing him. I beg, well, just one comment passing. The Google Nabu tape and all those. Me, I want IG to stay, except mm. that I want to make him more accountable. Mm. He can do the job. Nobody is perfect. Mm. So if you rope in IG, ah, police force over 40,000. How many are the ministers? It's not 80 something. Mm. Ah, and then the presidential staffers. And said so the presidential staffers, their numbers are. Even if I know, Dennis mm -hmm. has a problem with us when we mention 1,000. It's, yeah, it's because, 1,000 something. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, but he has a certain calibration. He says, yes, he has some. So you guys don't have to use that. You know that. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. No, no, no. Let's not split it. No, no, no. Let's not split it. Let's not split it. There's only, you see, by law. But there are two aspects. There are two aspects. It was a 999. It's not. So what was the number? Yes. It was 44. Oh, 44? Uh, no, we're yes. oh, yeah, no, we're oh, talking about, we need everybody about. in the building. No, everybody, everybody, everybody in the bank but, is a banker. But we, oh. we have people who are second. Oh. Everybody in the bank is a banker. Uh -huh. That's the one. I thought you were going to raise that one. I, I didn't want to interview. But no, so I, I want you to come in. For the sake, okay, let me come in. No, but he, 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 he said you, you, you have your own calibration. Yeah. It's not my own calibration. That is the fact. Presidential staffers are 44. You have several servants mm. that goes in excess of 600 mm -hmm. at the presidency. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are not yes. presidential staff. Yes. And then, indeed, there are political appointees who mm -hmm. are also not presidential staff. Uh -huh. okay. okay. in, in the presidential, please relax, 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 relax. We are indicated mm. in the in the presidential act, mm. the act that establishes mm. the office. Mm. It has categories of employees. Mm -hmm. We have presidential staffers. We have other political appointees. Then we have the civil servants. 
other political appointees are about 300. Mm. Civil servants are over 600. Mm. Presidential staffers out of the 300 are 44. Fact. Mm. Okay. You can do your okay. sentimental conversation, but these are the facts. Okay. Oh, okay. But, but, but I think he, 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 he did admit that. that, that there was no, but it is sentimental. Oh. 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 But to be fair to him, he said... But, but, was, he, but you don't have a number. problem. I've stated the fact to you before. Why do you, no, say, but he didn't remember why the number. Why do you say that's right? That's true. He, he didn't remember the number. So, and then you, you've clarified. So, right. so, right. so, right. No, but if I, I want to understand that, mm. so you, you have drawn a line between presidential staffers and, and presidential political. Parties. No, I haven't drawn a line. It's the law. Oh, so, yeah, no, no, but with, that's what so, you mean. So there's presidential yeah, appointees yes. yeah, and there are presidential staffers. And the list that you say is presented to parliament, that's how it's presented. Yes. So there are appointees and staffers. So, Selon, we are speaking online. Selon, you are not. You're not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. Said yeah, that you are coming to educate. So no, no, it's not. But you're also educating. No. So I also. No, but give me facts. So, so you they, can't put out. It's all right. Course, they say, uh, that is, okay, that's why I'm going to work in my own. I'm going. I'm going. No, no, it's okay. It's yeah, no, I mean, it's a discussion, so that's fine. Yeah. It's good so that you bring your perspective. Yeah. For us, all die be die. You see the list, and I it's not true. All die is all die. But, but, but the, the point is, there are civil servants yeah, who have just been seconded, so they cannot be part. No, maybe wait. The presidential the the government appointees. The power there. The appointees. So, if, uh, what is the difference between a staffer and an appointee? Let me explain to you. So, maybe a staffer has no, more. No, no, no. Let me no, explain to you the difference. It's, it's not no. the names, though. I can understand the civil servant. It's the but power. The, it's the power. It's the power. It's the power. So, what are you educating so, so, about? So, what, what's oh. the difference between a, a staffer and an appointee? It's, it's, it's not the same. So, what's the difference? If you go into a bank and you have a security man at the bank, he's part of the bank, so is he a banker? He's not. Is that not a difference between him and the bank? Staffers and responsibilities. No, no, no. I'm just giving you an example. So, tell us. The parks and gardens staff who are part of the thousand. They are, they are civil, they are the are civil they service. They are the civil service. So what right? are you talking about? Yeah, so the civil service, I can understand. Yes. Yeah, but so the what government appointees. The, 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 IT, the yeah. IT technician, mm -hmm. the IT technician, who is taking home about 2,300? No, we're not talking about salary. Let's go about what are you talking about. So the IT guy, for example, he will be a government appointee. Yes, but he's not a presidential staffer. Okay, that's fine. But the fact is, the fact to be established that there are no thousand presidential staffers. That's fine. But there are a thousand people who work there. Yes. So, Salon, I'm happy you brought it. So I'll still make my point. So those who want the technical team, they'll go with him. Those who want to be practical, like no, 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 you cannot be practical. Wait, he will say that thousand people work there. Yes. So that's fine. No, they're not staffers. Yes. 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 The, the job is grown bigger. No, 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 no. no, no the job is less. grown bigger. Now it's even less than what's going to happen. No problem. Uh, no problem. Uh, you, 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 right. Right. You, you see, make your point. the problem is that you speak without facts, and oh, you just oh, 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 how, how I am telling you, that I have the data. If you give me, I'll share. Okay. Okay. That's what you want to When I come to you, share. The data shows that even this year. It is lesser than it was under the antenna. No, no problem. So, so, so share that. So true. No, so then it share that with us. It is the idea. Means on top of the data is here. What we get to you? All right. So, what are you so, talking about? Yeah, so, so, Martin, go ahead. Yes, I, I don't want so to come in. No problem. No, no, no. So, so, if you will call yes, it, then it's me. Don't yes, worry. Me, the nature of my work. No, but don't deliver me without more than four. No. Yes. So. No, but we, we argue. Argue. That's the work we do, so I don't have a problem at all when you correct me. That's how long it is. We always say we are always learning. So, so for us, a thousand people are working there. A lot of them are exercising a lot of power. Let me tell you, let me just give a practical example out there. You remember last year when Manasseh did the case about the uh, corruption around the CCSP, the, the computer computerization of the, this and the SS uh, slots, the placement of uh, this in our kids in the SS, uh, this in the schools. It was a watchman, right? Underlings. Uh, you pay through there. So when you say somebody is, uh, this is what, I don't want to mention any specific job type, what does he do? You don't understand. Corruption, mm -hmm. sometimes you think the big man, just you don't know him, and then you come into his office, you want to give him money, he won't take. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, speak yes, facts. as I'm speaking, that's, that's why I gave you a specific. Facts. That's why I'm giving you a specific you example. Give you the a last one. But when you're referring to a factual matter, be factual. Uh, that's what I'm saying. No, 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 uh -huh. So I gave you the specific example. There are more examples of institutions mm. where we know. We just haven't come to them. You want mm. to bribe the big man. He's not taking that money. It's a, a watchman or a driver. You'll be shocked. You see somebody walking around very slim and looking innocent. If you don't see him, it won't work. Mm. So please, don't. if anybody tells you that, uh, somebody is just so so and so officer, he doesn't win so much, but it's a lie. If you know the grounds, mm. watch even rather the watchmen, mm. the this and the underlings, mm. they are the conduit. Uh -huh. right. So that, that's a preliminary. Now let's come. So your second, we have yeah, to so, do an so, introduction. Yes, so that's the fine. second one so, is so the that, application. Yes, yeah, so, so what does the CJ look mm. at mm -hmm. in matters like this to change a judge or say, no, there's no case of prejudice or bias made against the judge? So one word, the 
evidence. Mm. So how good is the evidence? Mm. How good it is? You know, in recent times, that, uh, that particular matter, they've uh, worked on it. They've, they've, they've gone up in terms of, they've increased the bar, mm. and that's what I'm looking for, in terms of the threshold, yeah. in terms of the evidence that you need to take a judge of. At least I can remember, I've done at least 16 years. Mm. Those days, easy. Any smart, even sexual oh, they used to grant. We all got sexual easy, easy. You want to prohibit a judge? It was relatively easy. Now, you go and sit in the Supreme Court, what? Even some applications that you think, oh, if I was a judge, I will grant. By the time they finish, they say dismiss. So in practice, you ask where they can tell that now the bar is very high. Mm. So the thing is about evidence. Mm. So they don't lightly do it. But applications are constantly being made. But let's make this point. The difference is that OSP has not sent an application to the Supreme Court. It's mm. not an application to the Supreme Court. It's this is a letter to the uh, yeah, a letter of petition to the CJ. And I like it. I like it because at least they are giving the CJ to look at it in a confidential manner. Yeah, it's better. Let's give that first opportunity. If it doesn't work, then it's up to the OSP to say, okay, look, I want to escalate. I want to go in open court. If the CJ alone looked at it and doesn't think so, I want to go to open court where five judges. Mm -hmm. On normal search applications, you have five judges on it. So that five minds will look at it and see whether the grounds that the OSP is raised are tenable, mm -hmm. are sufficient to take the judge off. So it's good. Look, it is very, very normal. Lawyers file such applications all the time. But like I've said, in recent times, very few, very, very few succeed. Most mm -hmm. of them are thrown off. Then the uh, second part of your uh, question. The, so, I mean, there, 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 were two, there, there, were, there were two parts there. Application to abridge, mm -hmm. whether it was unusual, you said it yeah. wasn't. Yes, yeah. yeah. so uh, the, to, the petition to, to remove yeah. the judge, yeah. you said it's also not unusual. Yes, yeah. so, so, so let's so, explain the... Yeah. I thought no, no, so, I mean, we have a number of things. Okay. Which, so, right. the, the, the point re really is, a lot of people haven't seen enough grounds, mm -hmm. you know, made by the OSP mm -hmm. to make him want to have the judge removed. It appeared they've just appeared before the judge once or twice. The first one or second mm -hmm. one was the abridgment mm -hmm. of term application mm -hmm. he granted. And the point really is the matter was to be heard, I think, the following week. Mm -hmm. And the woman says that all her accounts have been frozen. Mm -hmm. she, she's suffering. Mm -hmm. She cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. So she will want the application to be mm -hmm. brought forward mm -hmm. so it could be heard so everybody knows their level. Mm -hmm. that, that, is not, that is not so difficult to appreciate that the judge will grant. So I'm not sure how the office of the... I don't know the content of yeah. the letter... He's yeah. written to the CJ, Good. but I, I'm, I'm just not sure what really he, he, he has against the man okay. to warrant his removal. Good. So we all don't have the uh, letter to the CJ, and that's very commendable. Mm. Like I said, it's good that they handle it in a confidential manner at this first instance. Okay. So we can only look at the uh, trajectory, look at the past, the history of the case, and mm. try to guess some of the grounds. So this is an analysis. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not saying by all means we've looked at the Senate, but we can raise some. So this is an application that was granted. You know, the uh, trust of it was to say that for her, she was suffering. Mm -hmm. She was suffering, so they should hear the application quickly. So when she says she was suffering, and the judge having granted the application on the basis that she was suffering, then it raises grounds that, oh, the judge believes in her case, that mm. she's really suffering. So any reasonable prosecutor will be spooked mm. by such a case. Because if you say you are suffering under the law, that's section 40, it says that when such a matter happens and you are suffering, go to the court. When the application is being heard, you should be given reasonable provision to alleviate your suffering. Mm. Giving reasonable provision. But where you come and say, listen, I'm suffering, so I want all my money back. It's a different kettle of fish. Mm. So look at section 40, subsection 4. Hmm. It says, a freezing order under this section may be made subject to the conditions that the court considers appropriate and without limiting the scope of the order, provide for A, the reasonable living expenses of a person affected by the freezing order, including the reasonable living expenses of the dependents of the person and reasonable business expenses of the person. Mm. Then you go to B, if there's a debt, etc. Uh -huh. So, Madame Dapa didn't choose to say, oh, I want to be given reasonable provision to survive. No, she said, no, I want all of my money back. 
Mm. Mm. And so if it's the, 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 what do you call it? The abridgment. Abridgment means cutting short. Sure. Instead of, so the motion would have been heard. When we say motion, the papers, the case would have been heard on Monday. Then they bring it forward. So the judge was willing to hear it on Anyhow. Thursday. Mm -hmm. So yes. he went to court on Wednesday, yes. and the judge wanted to hear. So Wednesday was what? Uh, 11. Mm -hmm. And then Thursday, 12. 12. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Is that so? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they we, went we to court. 14. Ah, very good. <laughs> so they went to court on Wednesday, 11, and the judge was willing to hear the, the application, application the yes, on Thursday. And, then, mm -hmm. and that same Thursday, they were even going to take her plea for the failure to uh, provide OSP with the information. And, and OSP went with the letter to the CJ. And then also went to court to deliver a copy to him. And it's good the judge didn't make a fuss of it. Uh, the OSP officers went, they didn't rope, and they delivered a letter to the judge. And then uh, he agreed and adjourned. So it's good. Let them, I mean, let the CJ go into it. Because any reasonable proof, uh, uh, this prosecutor will be spooked. Mm. Why would you go for all of the money when the law says that, oh, they should give you a reasonable provision? To survive is there section 40 subsection 4 of the act 959 mm, i see you say <clears throat> so that's one mm. so we are trying to distill the grounds what mm. they are we are we have seen the letter then mm. number two you know the ruling that uh, justice chum gave the earlier one or the judgment the first one when mm. uh, the one osp lost uh, there were parts of it that were very harsh mm. he said they hadn't done any investigations and so it was just uh, the media frenzy, those things. Hey, that was very harsh, mm. extremely harsh. We shouldn't lightly use such words in a judgment. No, it's different. What we come here to sit and do is a different kettle of fish. This one, you read, every lawyer will tell you, you go to law school, it's basic. New York Times versus Sullivan tells you that public debate like this must be caustic, mm. robust, and candid. So here, what we do is different from court. Hey, in a judgment, when you write such harsh language, mm -mm, anybody will get spooked. Why? Mm. Is it, then it gets too personal. A judgment is different mm. from coming here. It's mm. a different kettle of fish. They'll tell you, New York Times versus Sullivan, and we have quoted it in some of mm. our cases in Ghana, so we have proved it. Public discourse, I'm remembering Professor Kumado, mm. uh, wherever is, God bless him. Mm. Let me tell you, New York Times versus Sullivan, public dis discourse, caustic, robust, candid, Mm. Ah, so that one will tell you anyhow, because, you know, politicians are very thick skin. Honorable Bao will admit, they are very <laughs> tough skin. So if you come here and talk in very lean terms, very banal, no, 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 no. They will say, oh, you don't have the balls for it. Mm. So here you ratchet it up, then they see that, oh, you are also up to their game. Mm. So they better calm down so that we do it the right way for Ghana to develop. I but see. not in the judgment. Very well. Fr Franklin, let me come to you. Um, Civil society has been watching this. Uh, I don't know what your thinking is generally around uh, how the parties are conducting the case, the Cecilia Dabha case. Now, uh, the OSP wants the judge removed from the matter because of what they say is prejudice against the person of the SP and the OSP itself. Well, these are legal matters, and I would rather leave the uh, lawyers to deal with it. But... Mm. As it is, um, as the borders of corruption, I think the government doesn't want to be hearing a lot more of these incidents anyway. And to hear Martin suggest that there are more such things in the pipeline is quite worrying, really. Um, on the substantive matter, though, I think the OSP is doing its work. Mm. It should be allowed. I don't think anybody should put any virus in its, in its stride. Um, and if it does a good job, it helps the government as well. Don't forget, if he manages to get some, back, some some of that money, it goes back to the state, really. So I don't think he's doing this for his personal gain, really. Mm. And so we don't support him. I see. Dennis, what's your thinking around the happenings right. of this week? Okay, no, are, are you, okay so you're, you're, what's your thinking around this in, happenings in this week as far as the OSP I, and I the Senate Department matter? I think that, that, that we need to control mm. Mr. Martin Kwebu mm. and the way <laughs> he goes about is 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 commentary mm. and he knows it and i keep telling him mm. um you can make commentary but when you want to speak to issues especially because when he sat here he said oh he's coming to educate us we should be a bit you know safe. how can you go and search people's homes should we go and search all politicians homes 
I mean, that's, that's a viewpoint. Yes. That, that, that's a view. Yes. But, but you're a lawyer. Mm. And you ask him an important question. He yes. refused to answer for him. He said, no, oh, but let's do it anyhow. Oh. No, how? Should we go and inspect Honorable Bar West Home? No, he said ministers. Uh, why? Why is he not a public And the CEOs of no, the state I don't, I don't control No, no, no he's not a public <laughs> No, but, but he, he, of course, he's, he's, he's an MP. Yeah. But an MP is very different from why is the different? minister. Because why? they control they control quite well, some And the CEOs of the state gives you money to utilize. Unfortunately, it is also administered by the district. Yeah, but you think the decision is by the district. Which minister signs a check in Ghana? No, no, but the point we're wait, making wait, is that they, wait, they, they control, they control no, quite some But he controls funds and he's telling you that he doesn't... Okay, so maybe you, you can say that. Let's expand mm -hmm. it to include MPs. No, it doesn't make sense. But it doesn't make sense. No, but you can say that. It doesn't make sense. You can say that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense for anybody to sit on TV <clears> and <throat> say that homes of citizens of the state by virtue of serving mm. in whatever capacity should be should be searched without recourse to, with, with recourse to which law? Mm. When you say that, at least say something, make a point, back it with a certain law. Yeah. Are you? What are you doing? And then you also put a falsehood. You don't ask him to give you any evidence. He just says it and say, "Oh, there's a presidential staffer that one million. The next time you say two million dollars, it's a lie. There is no presidential staffer whose one million dollars has been stolen. That's a complete falsehood. Mm. Uh, but, but He's a lawyer. You know, you know, your, the lady who was robbed. Mm. And money is retained. That was just a few, a, a few after, days after 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 this that all you know that. You, see, you don't want us to relax. mention no, 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 no. names on no, no, air. No, no, you see, you see, no, she was robbed. It was published. Yes, Honor Bawa, don't do this yourself. You have made reference to a particular specific matter. No, but he, 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 it is a lie. He, I am telling you that no presidential staff is one million dollars missing. That, you should fine. mention the name. That, that's fine. It's oh, a lie. It's a complete Sarah, falsehood. But she's, that's one thing. Otherwise, I've already told you that I mean, I'm not using presidential staff technically. I said somebody who works in the presidency. Mention president. anybody who works at the presidency. Mm -hmm. Who's one million dollars missing? It's a lie. It's, not, it's almost two million. It so is, a, it is not true. Place. It's a yeah. falsehood. You, you but as part of it, no, he said it to allow me to also deal with it. As part of his commentary, he said it. So let me deal with it. Because what he has said is a complete falsehood. Mm. Yeah. But it's a deliberate lie that he puts out there to plant it in the minds of your viewers and listen. And then he goes home. Mm. Nobody holds him up to it. And then he, he positions himself as this sanctimonious citizen who is fighting for the, 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 the sanctity of Ghana <laughs> and is without. Be Meanwhile, a, a court has actually found you guilty of thievery. You see the way when I said it. You see the reaction. You know, it's deliberate. Yes, it's deliberate. Oh, I you. I just caught you. I haven't said you. No, the judge has found you to be a thief. That's not true. I know that. What did the judge say? What did the judge say? The judge is stealing child. You know, thievery. Is it? Can I move on? Is it can, can I go on? Can I go on? The judge said that somebody's book that is co-written with you, you said the book is only yours because you are popular and smart. Hey, what does it mean? <laughs> but it, if it but, but you see the way you, mm -hmm. when I put out that issue, I said, no, it doesn't say the bottom. No, be, because I know what it is. But you hear him make such reckless comments, reckless descriptions of politicians without that, that, you that referencing him. No, no, he, he said, you know, oh. and we, we know that there are times matters come up. You can't mm. just put out a name. Yeah. But if you know if you know no, the process. If, a, if a, a minister of state mm -hmm. owns three houses at East Ligon, does it make him a thief? Does it warrant him to be searched? No, but if, 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 if we look at mm. what the minister earns mm -hmm. and we look at the minister's Legitimate sources. So, do you know the minister's legitimate sources? No, so, 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 so that raises questions. Exactly. So, if, a judge, says, so if a judge says that you wrote a book with somebody and you try to push the person out there, my description is that you are still in the person's book. Oh. <laughs> but you see, you see but, the way but, you are uncomfortable. No, 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 no that's no, a stretch. No, that's exactly. A stretch. Yeah. That's that a stretch. Is the, that is the same <laughs> bounds within which our commentary should be based on. Mm. It is reckless. It is irresponsible for you to sit on TV and make a blanket falsehood that there is somebody that's working at the president who's one million dollars is missing, it's and I don't want one, it's a lie. Eight million, but, but it's a lie. Okay, it's so very that is a lie. Very that is not true. Lie. Very it's well. a you complete step falsehood. Out, I'll tell you. Don't step out. You mention it here because you didn't step out because putting no, 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 it. But I didn't mention it because, because that's see, you can't, so, we can't continue to run. But Hamida, Hamida's money. I beg you. So why was why it wasn't one million? Hamida, Hamida was. Is it Hamida? You mentioned. No, Hamida was wrong. Eight million. Hamida was wrong. Let's 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 talk about it. I have been wrong. One hundred and forty thousand. 
robbed dollars. Right. Have been robbed. The, so what? The, the, eh? So what? So it makes a thief. No, no, sorry. Right. Let, so let's, it makes a thief. You, let's, let's no, I didn't you say are, that. You, are, you belong to a political party that is asking to come to power. Yes. If you become to power for whatever no, reason. No, you are asking for the name. No, I'm I just saying that. I'm that. giving you an example. No, but that is not what he is referring to. He made an emphatic statement. Yeah, this was 1.8 million dollars. And I'll say it. You understand? So don't tweak it. That's not what he's referring to. He made so, an so, statement. Yeah, so, so, and so, I'll give so that you is, the name after that, that point has been made. So I want to point has been made. No, I mean your 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 your, your disagreement with again, how it is. Again, again, you see, all these things are part and, of this. Yes, 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 they're money, they're politics. So let's not mention names. It's a lie. Which one? There is no money in any politics. It's a lie. You see, these are all things that you see, these are things that you do. You do that is not a distraction. No, I won't. I will stick to it. That's why he's stuck to me. If he changes, I'll change it. But I'm saying, don't get this. My job is to expose the falsehood. Otherwise, you should mention the names. So I sit here and I say, oh, there's an MDC MP who's three million dollars was missing. What's missing? Then I just go home. What kind of democracy are we building? And that is the responsibility that I spoke earlier about the media and the free speech. That as I sit here, I can just make a blanket, deliberate falsehood like he has done. That an NDC MPs ten million dollars is missing. Mm. Then all the one hundred and thirty seven MPs are not going to be looked in a certain light. Mm. Whether what I said is true or not, I just say it and I go. Mm. Is that how we want to build a democracy? Mm. So if he if he does it wrong, we should tell him. Mm. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to point him out. Very that well. he's lying. I'm not lying. Very, well. lying. Ah. Very, very well. So so that point is made. Ah. No, on the on the on the, and again he continues to peddle all these lies when he gets into that mood. This issue of uh, presidential staff is a thousand is a lie. Yeah, that, the, that, that the you corrected fact, that 44 the, and the some fact, 300. The fact is that mm -hmm. at every point in time, there are over 70% of the people who work at the president. Well, and even that, that list of nine that you see, 900 that you see, they all don't work at the office of the president. Mm -hmm. Mass lock staff, Ghana AIDS Commission staff, National Education Authority staff, Public Services Commission staff, all these institutions have their staff names in there. Control National and National Entrepreneur and Innovation Program. All these institutions are all part. I think that when we have the opportunity to speak, we have a responsibility to make sure that our viewers are also learning something and not necessarily try to put out falsehood just to advance our political cause. Very well. Oh, I don't but, think this is fair. That's why I brought you in. Yeah. You no, think but, I didn't know. Yes. Ah, yes. I no, said I think that, that, that yes. point is settled. So always but, acknowledge it. Yeah. Um, ah. says on the issue, I believe, because that is not the major uh, uh, topic that we are discussing. Mm -hmm. Just by for information. Mm -hmm. You see, when you have a situation where the total amount of money voted for your salaries for presidential staffers mm -hmm. moves from 136 million in one year mm -hmm. to 823 million. Mm -hmm. There are two things. Mm -hmm. Either you have increased your numbers mm -hmm. or you are giving people unreasonable salaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still all a burden on the, on the taxpayer. Yeah. So these are facts, and I am not the one stated. It's stated in the budget, mm -hmm. and the, 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 these are facts that we can always I'm always. Not the fact right. is that the numbers have been increased. Mm -hmm. Very so well. that's no, not no. a fact. So, oh, so, so don't speculate. Question, don't leave it in there. Uh, you had so, indicated that you had indicated that the numbers have been increased. increased. No, no, I'm just telling you that. Mm -hmm. the, the, don't leave it there. Don't say it as if you've put something out there that we don't have an answer to. The numbers of presidential staffers are known. Their salaries are known. Speak to it. Don't I don't know. What I can't say. Have you know that figure? Has it given you? No, no. You said what? One three six million. So, so and I moved to eight and then why? So it could be salary increment. Does that mean that the numbers are increased? I know. I said that the numbers are increased. Or they are taking on. But we are not talking about. We are talking about expressive. You see, when people no, no. But he said no. No, he put out expressive. Chill. That's what we are talking about. But we've moved on from there. He is saying that. It's not even part of the discussion, but he just threw it. So he's doing something else. No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about specific lies. That is right. 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 He yes. deferred to you, that and then you made a point about yes. 44 and 300 yes. and civil servants, which is and, a fact. Yes, which and is a fact. No problem. And he says that for him, yes. everybody working there is yes. people who work at the president. Yes. I'm, I'm telling you that, I'm telling you that even the Nana is mentioning, not all of them work at the president. Yes, so, so no, but that's what he has said. So, 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 so he doesn't make it, he's so, he's so light. President that's what that's the issues he put that were false. That, it's but but if in the office of in the office yes, of it's a the, uh, the, 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 the is commission's uh -huh. office, yes. it's another office of the president. Let me tell you, let me tell you, but they are somewhere else, they are captured under the office of the president. Let me tell you something, you see. 
when somebody is deliberately misinforming oh, the stop, public, stop this thing, and you stop establish this it, you speak to it. Uh -huh. You don't give the person room uh -huh. to read around. No, no, but, but, the we, gentleman we, started we, we by saying that there are a thousand presidential staffers. Oh. That was a specific and statement. Then to me. And then I came in. Then I came in. He but this was the first time correcting him. He but he defended me. How did he know? How did he know that I know? Because this is the first time I'm correcting you from this. Don't say correct. Don't say correct. Don't say correct. Don't say correct. My point is this. When you made false statements, you say don't get here. You lied. When you lied, you said that you lied. I apologize. But you won't. Because you don't accept that you lied. Then it's okay. It's right. I'm sure you have no fight from somewhere. No, no, no. I can understand. I can understand, Dennis, in that this government has been troubled with issues of uh, corruption mm -hmm. to an extent that when you are even defending it, it becomes difficult. But of course, you have on day one, 7th January 2017, was the first day that the corruption started, when the president decided to plagiarize somebody's speech. That's a sign of corruption, stealing somebody's ideas. So that's a sign of corruption. <laughs> but the baby is corrupt. <laughs> Still somebody's idea. The court has no good. Right. Now, then you have situations where we have <laughs> had stories that have not been resolved. Okay. The issue of post. You remember the up to now? Yeah, it, it was something I personally followed yeah. that had not been done. The issue of the conflict of interest and transparency on the 2.25 billion uh, bonds that were raised the, 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 to the extent that the minority had even petitioned the U.S. Yeah, frankly, definitely yes. The, the issue of the 800,000 uh, websites on this. Uh, 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 ministry for Special Initiatives, if you recall. But they said it was a typo. Oh, what was a typo? Was it expanded? Oh, oh, it wasn't. Was because no we didn't amount. approve it. No, because we didn't approve it. Because we didn't approve it. And of course, yeah, so, so it didn't go through. Yeah. So it didn't no, go against see, the right. So, 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 so that, that, that's why see, you are there. You see, see, to, that, to be see, the eyes of the people. The fact that I come to these studios and pick your laptop, mm. huh? And then finally, you are able to take the laptop from me. You didn't, you didn't take it, but you didn't intend, intend to take it. take it. I see. So that is the point. Mm. So basically, this, can, uh, this uh, government has had challenges with corruption. Now, to the Cecilia Dapai's case in particular, you see, I see that particular issue as a tragedy to Ghana. Because we are talking at a situation where the government is asking all Ghanaians to tighten their belt because of economic uh, challenges. A situation where your own studios here talked about people, about only 7% of people can access dialysis, even though you have all these people who are sick. Situations where even SSS, secondary schools, food, their food, the quality of food they give to them is terrible. To the extent that you have uh, the uh, Charles, there's a conference of heads of uh, SSS secondary schools coming out to say that now give us an opportunity to procure our own our own food. And of course, that one, just to even tell you, the very reason why they took the procurement from the headmasters and centralized the procurement was because of corruption. It is corruption, it is corruption related, it's induced decision that was being done. Because if they, if they procure them in bulk, then they, they can get their kickbacks. Because there was no sense in trying to take those things away from, so from the when you have When you have all these situations, then suddenly you hear that between July and October, you have situation where house helps were stealing monies. Mm. Look, Salon, I'm telling you, if somebody takes your 50 Ghana cities now, you will know. Mm. I'm telling you because you know the amount you have left in your pocket. So if you can't find 50 Ghana cities, you will know. But to a situation where between, uh, what do you call it, between July and October, they were able to take up to about a million plus, mm. and you didn't even know about it tells you the amount of money that, and of course it was confirmed when later on the OSP himself went there to go and see what was going to happen. So that is a disaster for the country, and of course for the government in that, in that sense. The understanding I'm getting is that the OSP has a feeling that, look, he's not being treated fairly by the, the, the trial judge oh. on the issues. He's welcome to the party. These are some of the challenges that other persons have had oh. cause to raise. Situations where you go and you you will you will see and people who have gone to court will tell you that they just see open bias, mm. open bias, and sometimes you it, it gives you a sense of you know, look, the judiciary to be a very large extent should be more developed than other particularly the other arms of government because you see 
whether it is a military regime, whether it is a, 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 a constitutional regime, the judiciary is always there. Mm -hmm. And so on the basis of that, they would, over a period of time, be able to know how to handle themselves and execute their duties as much as possible. Unfortunately, that is not being done. And of course, the OSP is currently, in his judgment, thinks that he is now a victim of that, that particular behavior from the judiciary. And I think the judiciary must take a second look at it. Of course, but I, I'm told that the Chief Justice will definitely make a, a, a pronouncement on it as to whether that is going to be done or not. I do not really have a problem mm -hmm. until uh, Martin, uh, Martin raised the issue of even if you have, if you, when you go and free somebody's account mm -hmm. or you, you seize his funds, obviously the person has to leave. So I did it initially when I heard <coughs> that the, 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 the judge had breached the, the period for which they were going to hear the case, I saw it to be reasonable. I said, ah, if you have seized my, my, you have seized my funds and you have frozen my accounts, and then you think that you these figures, quickly. yeah, you should be able to quickly to, to allow me to also live a very decent life. So I didn't have a problem, but I really don't know that even in the law, they have indicated provisions. that there are provisions that you can go and ask that look on the basis of X Y Z, such <laughs> amounts of money should be made either to settle my debt, either to take care of my business because the business is collapsing, because there has not been a judgment on it, mm. and because there's no judgment on it, do not let either myself or maybe my business suffer. or whatever suffer. Mm. So. I don't know why the lawyers did not opt for that, but rather went in for mm. uh, what about Then it then confirms why the judge, uh, the OSP was saying mm. that, that look, it's not also giving them enough time to respond to respond to uh, this, uh, this situation. So that is an area that, but yeah. the part that is interesting is uh, what the OSP indicated about the FBI mm. and then uh, they themselves uh, collaborating. collaborating in situations like this. Talking about the fact that there are some sort of transactions and property that they want to see whether how lawful these transactions mm -hmm. had been made and these properties, how lawful were they acquired. Do you recall uh, the audio that came out <coughs> about one of the presidential, uh, uh, what do you call it, aspirants mm -hmm. in the MPP when he openly said that not only are they looting, but mm -hmm. they are taking these monies mm -hmm. outside and investing mm -hmm. them outside. This is the past case confirms what this man was saying. But we don't know what they will find yet. It's just a move they've made. No. You see, we, we, you don't we are go, not sure what they will go, find. You don't go, you don't go just saying that you are just, just as you, why are they using U.S.? Why didn't they say Burkina Faso? <laughs> Maybe they have they suspicion. Be, no. But we need to see the substance before that, we can make a I am very convinced that they have reasonable uh, grounds basis to, say, basis to say that they want to investigate the transactions well. and properties well. of the woman and her associates. Well. So, in my, in my very humble opinion, look, i tell you the truth. You see, and me, I'm being a prophet here. Mark my words. This case will not get in the way. Mm. I don't know whether, Martin, you've heard this. Mm. Currently, they are contemplating, I don't know whether they have actually filed it or not, they are contemplating going to the Supreme Court to say that the OSP law Mm -hmm. Violates the constitution. It's been filed. That's it's been filed. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. The OSP law and mm -hmm. Ken Krachi, Everybody knows who Ken Krachi is. Mm -hmm. The OSP law violates the uh, Article 88 of the constitution, and therefore it should be declared as null and void. The moment the Supreme Court rules on this, mm -hmm. it means that this is But the Supreme Court may rule against. It. Exactly. Anyway, oh, but but yes, they rule but against it. But I'm just telling you, look. Uh, if a Supreme Court, the Supreme Court, I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. But you see, you no. The point I'm trying to make. No. The point I'm trying to make. No. It's not true. I'll take a break. Okay, you take a break. So I get it. I'll take a short break. Return and then we'll deal with that. We're also hearing that some civil society organizations visited the Speaker of Parliament to deal with some matters. The 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 Google Habu IGP matter. We we'll see about that. Don't go away. You're yeah, welcome back to the big issue. Uh, we're just having a discussion of what's been happening this week, the corruption matters, etc. This week also, Atuasian was jailed for 15 years. He entered some arrangement with the state. He failed to pay the 90 billion the state asked him to pay, so he has his freedom somewhat. He paid just 37 million. Out of the 40 million, he paid 30 million from the beginning. It was to pay the 60 million in three installments. Uh, in April, 20 billion, August, 20 billion, and December also, 20 billion. April, he couldn't make it. August, he couldn't make it. He could only pay seven million, and so in total, he paid thirty-seven. The state went back to court to tell the court that the, the, the sentence you suspended now you can deliver because the guy has failed. 
the judge, uh, the, 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 the respected uh, Eric uh, J. Bafo, mm -hmm. sentenced him to 15 years in jail. That is a situation. Another, uh, uh, another feather in the cap of government, if you like, for its fight against corruption. This was in respect of the banking sector cleanup. Uh, uh, Bawa, just a quick one. Your view on the sentence. Deterrence enough, severe enough, or too much? I think that uh, um, it's deterrent enough. Mm -hmm. 15 years of your life mm -hmm. is not a chance. Very well. When we know that our, <clears throat> our lifespan, maybe roughly, the even the scriptures say 70, 80 for those who are mm -hmm. strong. So, I mean, 15 years. And I, apparently that was supposed to be the highest in, among the virus counts. No, so, I think it could, it could be 25 years. Uh, you know, no, I'm just saying that, yes, I think they said 15. So I think, you know, I think it was over 95 years. No, okay, okay. They were running, they were running concurrently. Okay, yeah. so. so, and because maybe he had already paid about mm. 37 out of the total amount of money he was supposed to pay, maybe that's the basis for which they did. it. Nobody should always be excited when somebody's incarcerated. Mm. I mean, mm. it is not a good feeling mm. for the family, for whoever. But I think that, in my very humble opinion, and I had asked a, a lawyer, I think, to the, the moment the case was done, I said, ah, all transactions and other things will have to be approved by the board. Mm. They also have to report to the board. To what extent was the board implicit in this? Because they seem to be a bit silent. I know that, of course, there are about two or three people who also went to court. They were sent to court and then later on. There were three <coughs> extra people. The people who were but taken they, they, they were, Yes. Two of them acquitted and discharged. Yes. One. You know, no case was really made against her. Okay. So there could be a number of people on the board, okay. but if the investigation doesn't show that they are directly involved. Yes, I mean, but I mean, for me, I, that would be very surprising mm. that you have a situation where, if or not, not the board chairman mm. is not a, was not aware of all this and that these monies were being stolen because mm. he was charged for thievery, basically, that the board chairman did not know this. And so um, I would be interested in knowing what details, what was the level of investigation, to what extent were they freed, to what extent were they not involved in it. The fact that you just say that you are placing charges on one individual does not mean that somebody else is not culpable. Well. I am not saying that uh, somebody is culpable. That somebody, but I, I, it's interesting to say you have a founder who rather is then you, you don't have. Uh, we all heard that some of these board meetings were being done in the board chairman's house. Well, I, 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 no, I, I, we don't. That's fine. I'm running out of time. So, uh, it's for them to. So, that is. I want to find out from Honorable how he will know if I'm stealing his money <laughs> from his car. Because I'm stealing. <laughs> All right. So, so, it's possible. Mm. It's possible that somebody could be stealing. So, what, what do you think? And, and I'm not even in branches. How many secured? Uh, yeah. um, you know, I, 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 honestly, when I, I, I read the story, I said, I, I felt very sad. Mm. I felt sad for, for, for him. Not because he hasn't committed the crime, mm. but because I thought he, he is a very vibrant young entrepreneur that could have done things in a way uh, much more better than um, he's been accused of, 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 of doing. Mm. If you look at how he sprang up mm -hmm. and all the things he, were doing, he was doing, I really think that um, we should have seen more of, of him. It's a complete life wasted, mm. to be very honest with you. Um, the manner in which sometimes you read some of the stories and how he's being accused of carrying himself. Mm. At some point, they may not be true, but I, I used to read that some of the money governments give the bank to, to recover, he took them, took some to Zimbabwe to go and engage in some. So I think all of that came together. Uh -huh, and then, you then know, he, has, so, he has this exactly, so, sentence now. Yeah, so I feel that I'm sure when he's in his cell now, he would be regretting a lot of things and would have wished he had done them Very well. differently. Very well. I, I, I also <laughs> think that this, of course, becomes a landmark issue that others would mm. really learn from because a lot of people have suffered mm. as a result of this this banking sector cleanup, which is as a result of some actions and inactions of some of these banking Very executives. Well. Fr Franklin, um, yeah, so, so, so that's it. Um, I mean, Ma Martin, um, mm -hmm. You think it was harsh or not? Just, just, just in one minute. I don't feel that. Oh, no, it, it, I can't say it's harsh. Mm. But rather, I'm a bit, uh, you know, the main point is this. The one point, the property that he was hoping to sell. Mm. To be honest, I need to readjust my thoughts. Because all, all along, when I was coming, what I had read was that oh, the property he has in Pram Pram is 
10 million dollars. So my whole point was that, oh, let's go for the money. Mm -hmm. Then he leaves jail because we need the money more than three yeah. years. But I was on a program with Deputy Attorney General, and he says the uh, property rather is one point something million instead of 10. So that's so small. And so it's just taking me aback. Yeah. The sentence cannot be said to be mm -hmm. uh, harsh. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, Deputy Attorney General Tia Ibuwa said that that property you was talking about is rather one point something million. Do you know something? Me, mm -hmm. that notwithstanding, let's go into that particular case to see. Maybe we can get something. Look, yeah. even if we get $100,000, so it's, you know, it's good money. Yes. So let's go. So I'm begging AG, they should mm -hmm. go into that case because the Deputy AG said, no, they hadn't gone into it. Mm -hmm. So if they haven't, let's call upon them to go into that case. There's a civil case. They say that property is a subject matter. Let's go into it and see what we can get. That's very important. Very well. Uh, Franklin, um, your view on this, but I, I'll take you away from that. I, you, you, I hear you guys went to, I mean, civil society organizations visited the Speaker of Parliament. So this is on a different matter. Uh, because you, you guys say you're unhappy with the way the IGP leak tape matter was being probed. Uh, why will you visit the, the Speaker of Parliament on a matter like this when you could make representation to the committee and, and then state your point? Well, first of all, let me just also say that uh, it is sad to to see uh, Ato SM jailed. Um, I think the lesson for everybody, uh, political or outside of politics, is that um, we should be careful uh, whenever we are entrusted with some duty of care, especially when money is involved. Mm. Having said this, I'm not entirely sure this will end anytime soon because you remember when uh, people were arguing for capital punishment to end, the very persons who were being hanged in medieval times for pickpocketing had come to watch pickpocketers being hanged. They were actually pickpocketing as well. So um, <laughs> I hope that this matters to the guide us all. Well, we just didn't go to see the speaker on the police matter. I think we went to see the speaker to have broad discussions on governance uh, issues within the sub-region and indeed the, basically the economic lives of people around the world and especially Ghana, which have been decimated by uh, mostly government action, but also Russia, Ukraine, and a bit more of this uh, so-called, uh, well, we are not so-called, but COVID, right? So we were discussing many, many things in general. But of course, we were worried as well that, that the police um, administration is being colonized and is being mocked. And indeed, uh, we thought that it was it was setting the stage for a demoralized police force that may not be able to probably pro uh, prosecute the major issues in the country, especially the election that is like that is coming in, the, in next December, right? And we thought that the, we wanted to find out from the speaker what his original terms of reference was for the committee. Because we realized that the committee chairman seems to be setting his own questions and answering them. And the speaker was categorical that, well, look, I gave the chairman <laughs> of the committee specific terms of reference. Mm. Now the authenticity of the tape, basically those comments that were made and the persons who made them. And to the extent that those have been uh, largely adduced, well, we thought the matter must end. So we were very alarmed that if we did not take care and the way the committee chairman is actually handling the issue. Remember, be minded, I'm not mentioning the committee, because the committee chairman is the one directing affairs and then even ranking members of hard cause to even walk away at some point in time, right? So we were worried that the way things were going, uh, he's actually not respecting his own terms of reference and it's going beyond and it's putting the police hierarchy in, in, in a very bad light. We are not saying that if there are issues involving Mr. Dampari or the ITP, they should not be investigated. But as far as the remit of his committee goes, it's way out of line. And I think that we should, we should, we should, we were minded and we were worried that these matters must be brought to, uh, to his attention. Well. In a society, we need some strong men as well. We cannot have another Demelovo being removed. We cannot have Martin Amidu with a situation where he complained about being uh, you know, um, being harassed in order to be, not to do his pro work properly. We need people who can also man institutions that can leave them and not leave the, basically leave some legacy for everybody to follow. We are not saying Dampere is a saint, but certainly we are saying that the committee chairman has been brought to book, and I'm happy that uh, I should speak, that cross-examination which he was entertaining has been stopped. We've achieved our aim. Thank you.
Mm. All right. Uh, so, so that's how we, we conclude today's edition of the program. Um, uh, thanks so much. Um, as, always, as always, a lot to discuss, and, and thanks so much for my guest, uh, Edward Bauer, MP Boku. Uh, uh, Bongo, I'm sorry, <laughs> MP Bongo. Uh, 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 Franklin Kudio, President of Money Africa, you just heard him. Dennis Abouaji Miracles, uh, Presidential Staffer, and I'm careful to, to, to say important. that, Presidential Staffer. Yes. And then Martin Pebu, Private, private and Legal and private, and CEO private of legal I, Practitioner. I, I am, what is even that <laughs> Thank one? you very much. Uh, but, but Martin, people are just concerned. I mean, we saw a picture of you and Cecilia Dapa. What was she telling you? Two seconds. Oh, yes, admonish me to be objective. It's fine. It's, it's not antagonistic. No. Oh, okay, yeah, very it's, well. It's okay. It's okay. Mm. I don't have any problem. Okay, yeah. very well. Mm. No, she, th thank you so much. Continue. Yeah. 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 She continue. Yeah. 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 She continue being yeah. objective. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, have a good afternoon. My name is Salam Adunu. Have a good afternoon. Catch you soon. Time next.